from the Gettysburg Museum of History Studios, high atop Baltimore Street, in a security facility complete with central air. It's AG Today. Hi, Aaron. And Mayor from the Civil War Breakfast Club podcast. This is Dan Casella from the No Pollution of Cowardice podcast. Wayne Motts from the Gettysburg Foundation. Hi, I'm John Rothman. Hi, this is Bo Brinkman. Hi. Joseph Fuquay, and you're listening to Addressing Gettysburg. <laughs> you're listening to you're listening to Addressing Gettysburg with Matt Cowher. Don't ever go in America, got talent. You won't make it. Did you say Ed Lincoln? Bullshit. Oh, <laughs> the top of the list. Oh, yeah. You're listening to the Dressing Gettysburg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This podcast. Did the Smithy. I said more ham. You can stay over now, but I'm going over now. I got hairy legs. Your swearing sounds so old. Menachem Bailey. Really? Oh my gosh. You know, oh, it's devastating. <laughs> Let your fuck to death out in that river. Hello, everybody. Hello, Beth. How are Hi. you? Uh, well, I'm kind of perturbed at Mr. Colby. Why? What did he do, Colby? He always puts the camera on me when I'm doing some kind of stupid <laughs> face. That's what I'm like, supposed what to do. What the hell? <laughs> that's his instruction. Just doing my job, man. Yeah. I, that, I, that's what I instructed I him to do. I am upset and offended and perturbed at the same time. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. No, it's okay. You forgot to add in lovely. Aww. Aww. That's how you do it, man. That's how you do it, dude. And he recovers. You're so cute. <laughs> You're perturbed and lovely. <laughs> <coughs> what an ass. I know. <laughs> but that's our Colby. That's what we love about him. That is what we love about it him. It is really what we love about him. Just a, about it. What am I hearing? Why am I hearing? What am I hearing? Someone is it you again? On? I'm sure it's me. Did you have your phone? I can't help it. I do it every time. Oh, I don't I, I'm so horrible at the saying, world. I made sure to turn mine down. Yeah, it wasn't Debbie. It was you. Once again, Beth, it was you. Once again. <laughs> again. So let's say, first of all, happy birthday to Ezra. Hey! Four years old. Yes. The big indeed. zero four. It's yes. a big year, man. It is it a big is a year. Huge year. Oh, I remember my fourth birthday. Do you? Oh, like Did you get yesterday. a truck cake? A Everybody what? always gets a truck cake. They didn't have that in my day. We didn't oh. know how to. You just got a basic cake. We didn't cake. know how to make cakes. We didn't know how to make cakes with in, in the, the shape of things. <laughs> All right. We had, we, had yeah. <laughs> we had cookie puss. We had cookie puss and uh, fudgy the whale um, uh, from Carvel ice cream. You probably don't oh, have no. those around the country, but uh, in our area, we had Carvel ice cream. I think it was like in New York, New Jersey. Uh, ice cream bakery thing. And to be honest with you, I never liked Carvel. I never liked Carvel. We only had Dairy Queen in Clarion. Yeah, so Same. if if I got to go with an ice cream shop that's like not a like a home. Yeah. What am I trying to say? Mom and pop type of mm -hmm. thing. Dairy Queen's a good one. Yeah. But um, there was this one. So the the final episode of The Sopranos was shot at a place called Holston's uh -huh. in uh, Bloomfield, New Jersey. I know this because it was two doors down from my father's liquor store. Aww. And um. It's funny. I remember my father was all excited because we love The Sopranos. You know, you grow up in North Jersey. You live in North Jersey. The Sopranos is mm. like your, you know, Bible, or, mm -hmm. uh, sort of not a Bible, but you know what I mean. <laughs> and uh, so we, uh, we, we just loved it because, like, every time, every time uh, they would. You know, every episode you waited to see if they mentioned your town or a place that you knew. Yeah, you know, or I if they that. shot somewhere you oh, recognized. Oh, I'd be the same way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I got to go up to this place of Piscataway. We're all like, oh, Piscataway. We know where that is, Piscataway. <laughs> and so um, uh, the, uh, uh, the the final episode was going to be shot at Halston's. Now Halston's is still, as far as I know, still in business. It's been there since like I I feel like the 30s or something. Like it's since prohibition ended, basically. <laughs> but you go in and it's an old fashioned like ice cream joint with the counter on the oh, left I and love the round stools, like that. and you got the soda jerk behind oh. it. And then on the right they have like this 
big case full of homemade candies. Love and apparently like that. that's where the Easter Bunny used to get uh, our Easter baskets um, on his way home from work. Totally makes sense. <laughs> I sense an AG road trip. He's a, he's a practical uh, kind of yeah, guy. Right? He's just one-stop shop. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they have uh, really good food. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, like burgers and things like that. You know, that kind of fried food and everything. So you go there, you get like a vanilla shake and a bacon cheeseburger yeah. or something like that. And as a little boy, my grandfather, you know, we'd go down to my dad's store on Sunday and we'd stay there, play around in the in the liquor store for a bit until we'd knock something over and break it. And then we'd go over to my grandparents' house where they were like a mile away. Mm -hmm. We'd spend time with them. And my grandfather would take us down to Halston's for some ice cream and a grilled cheese and bacon or something like that. And it was just great memories, and you know it's still the best burger in the world to me. And but the home, the ice cream is homemade. They made oh, it there. Love it. And the Can't vanilla was vanilla. The chocolate was chocolate. It didn't taste mass produced. Was it chocolate? It was chocolate. chocolate. The chocolate was chocolate. The cherry vanilla was cherry vanilla. It had real cherries <laughs> in it. And oh, the oh no, that oh I what you don't like no. cherries? About, I can't do. What about banana? Like banana things. milkshake. You know, or like Oreo shake. Says, I uh, can do that, but like, like uh, everyone at work the other day went to Rita's. Yeah, and they were like, "Oh, we're gonna go to Rita's. This is fantastic." And I'm like, "I can't." Really? Why? Why? Rita's because it great. has like pieces in it. Oh come off! And then of when it. I slurp it up through the straw, it's like, "How do you feel about orange juice with pulp?" Oh, uh, I'm, yeah. I'm, with oh. You. I'm with you. I have to agree. And I'm from Florida, so My I feel like I'm a, an expert brother in orange juice. Wrong buys the yeah. extra pulp. Orange juice. Oh, see, now that bothers me, yeah. the extra pulp, because it gets stuck in my mustache. I, you know, I don't like it. <laughs> and then people think I have like an orange booger. Uh-huh. <laughs> and then like, it's extra pulp, my it's mustache. like eating corn with your orange juice. It is. It's stuck <laughs> in your teeth. I don't I don't like the extra pulp. No, I don't either. No, but I think that's probably better for you than the no pulp at all, because at least there's some kind of fiber there, then you can process it better. Uh, you know, uh, not the... Because there's so I much disagree. sugar in orange juice. But there's also vitamin, vi vitamin, vitamin D, vitamin, vitamin C. C. We're on to something new here. Yeah, yeah. vitamin. Vitamin. Well, um, whatever. Um, <laughs> anyway, so, so okay, so they're filming the last scene of The Sopranos, right? Oh, my God, we're back right? to this. Okay. Yes, okay. All right, I so, thought that was done. No. Okay. Nope. We now, didn't derail it. <laughs> so my, my, my dad is all excited that these, you know, big Hollywood people mm -hmm. are going to be there. Mm -hmm. So Lorraine Bracco, who was in The Sopranos, mm -hmm. um... She said, she, Mr. Calorie behind the counter. Is that what happened? Exactly. I she knew goes, it. Mr. Calorie, you're so handsome. And he was like, oh, Lorraine Bracco. <laughs> no, no, no. And so <laughs> she had her own wine, Bracco Wines. Uh -huh. And they carried it at the store. So he put a big display in Aww. the window and everything. Nobody How saw it. <laughs> he was so disappointed. But anyway, so they filmed the scene, right? Now, when it comes, have you seen The Sopranos? No. Okay, you don't need to have seen it to, to get this. When when the scene airs, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the, you know, Tony goes in, the, and the whole family goes into Holstein's. They sit down, and you know they're going to have a family dinner together. And you know and they're looking at the menu, and uh, Tony says something like, "He goes, uh, I'll get the onion rings. The onion rings are really good. They got the best onion rings here, right? you know." And whatever, no, no big deal. Onion yeah. ring, right? So you know, we knew the owner because they own businesses together, and so of course I, you know, kind of knew the guy, and I worked there. And um, at my father's place. And uh, so one day I'm in there talking and I go, uh, has the Sopranos, you know, episode helped you guys business wise? He's like, oh, my God, because there's a bus tour that goes to all the, the oh locations my God. and nice. they, they stop here and we get like a busload of people come Just in wanting the onion, onion rings. and they want the onion rings and, and people taste them and they go, oh, my God, these are the best onion rings I've ever had. Tony was right. But here's the thing. They didn't have onion they rings. They never carried onion rings. <laughs> and, 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 he, and he goes, he goes, people started asking for them after the show aired. And so I just got them from Cisco. He's like, there's nothing. He's they're the same onion rings anybody else gets from Cisco. But, you know, it's the power of a suggestion. Yep. People think, because Tony Soprano said they're the best in the world. They think, oh, they take, he's like, you just, all these people take a bite. Oh, they're so good. Oh. And it's just the same that you'll get anywhere else. And they're like dying it. laughing in the kitchen. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> See, all, all the way know. to the bank. They're yeah. laughing all the way to the bank is where they're laughing. There's a place in Clarion that's similar situation. They have, um, it's called Bob Sub. It just burned down. So sorry, oh. RIP, Bob Sub. But everybody that goes to college there says, you have to get a sub from Bob Sub. That's like the one thing as a college student, you have to go get a sub. 
And it's always like it's it's something with the mayonnaise. They're mayonnaise. They it's yeah. they must home make the mayonnaise. And the one time I was in there, I said, "Okay, uh, gotta ask where <laughs> who makes the mayonnaise." And she goes, "It's literally Hellman's." <laughs> and I was like, "Okay, yeah." Well, so, when you bring out the Hellman's, the best. best. Uh, a Indeed. lot of people don't realize yeah, that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that that is. Uh, 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 great that uh, little Ezra's four. Now, <laughs> I don't we know how that all wait. the way around. Can I tell one Ezra's four story? I don't know how yes, we got... please. Yeah, go. <laughs> so Ezra's two favorite things right now. We've we've kind of moved on beyond tractors. Mm. Oh. Are dinosaurs specifically a T Rex and um, robots? Oh. So at daycare, they got him a T Rex robot. Its Ooh, eyes glow. Oh my god! It was the greatest thing ever. It moves. It walks across the ground, and then it stops and roars and moves its head, and then it moves again. And so he was. I, I have never seen a small child like he was so excited. He was frozen. Like he couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't move. He couldn't talk. He couldn't articulate anything. He was just like. Uh, his two favorite uh, things combined uh, into one. Like it was amazing <laughs> to watch. And then I had asked him what he wanted to do for his birthday. And I said, What food do you want? He said, Pizza, which of course, come yeah, on. Yeah. I can't blame And him. I said, Well, we can do a movie night. Yeah, let's do a movie night. What movie do you want to watch? Jurassic Park? No. Well. What movie as a four year old boy do you think he would want to watch? Daddy's Bird. Well, no. Um, you have wait, to think wait, wait, like a think. child. Power Rangers. No. No, Power Rangers. That's that's before his time. Uh, he's going to want to watch... Frozen. <laughs> <laughs> Hotel Transylvania no. 3. No. Oh. Uh, it's a good option. Two this was, no. this was a good. trick question because the movie oh, my wait, wait, son... Wait. Nightmare on Elm Street. No. Okay. The movie my son requested to watch... For his fourth birthday was Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. My favorite oh, one. Yeah, dude, that's, <laughs> the the best best one. that's the yeah, best one. That's absolutely the best one. The best one, dude. Yep. Sean Connery's in it. It's, yes. You can't beat it. No, you yep. can't. Good job, Ezra. <laughs> yeah, he was like, I want to do Jones. Wisely. If he wasn't going to pick <laughs> Jurassic Park, that is a fabulous other option. Well, we haven't introduced him to Jurassic Park yet, except for the dinosaurs that he gets. Uh, have like the little Jurassic yeah, Park. They're probably from there. like that movie. Well, yeah, Indiana you know, Jones and the Last Crusade is the best one. And really I often is. wonder. Oh, so okay, so you think it is, a Debbie? Lot, a lot of people. A oh, lot it's of people 100%. say that it's not, though. A lot of people will say that the first one. Right, and best. and I. So mm. here's my theory it's on the this. Second best. One. Here, so number two. You know, like they say that, like when you're around the age of twelve, whatever is like the popular music, the popular movie, whatever you not popular necessarily, but whatever you see or hear at that time will carry through your life as the best mm -hmm. of whatever yeah, right 100%. and so what yeah. I, th I, b I do believe around that age is when indiana jones came out and uh, i went and saw it for my birthday and the i first see one? no the, the third how one. old do you think i am well, I'm, that's indiana I'm jones on the last crusade <laughs> okay and and i uh i i i I think, and I had seen the other two prior to that, and mm -hmm. I liked them. I mean, mm -hmm. they're great movies, right? The second one's not so great, but the first See, one was I good. I like the second one. He rips that, he's ripping Kaliba. people's parts yeah. out of their chest. Kaliba. Kaliba. Yeah. Spooky, man. No, that scared me. Uh, but anyway, the third one, I just, I don't know. There's just, maybe it's because of the Dr. the Joel. lore of the third one, I, mm -hmm. I find to be more interesting than the second one. What, yeah. what and year were you Sean, born? 78. Sean, Connery. Sean Connery's in it too. So well, you got, and that's you the other Harrison thing. Ford and Sean Connery. So you get, but you also get Indiana Jones as a young kid. Which yeah. is also, right? it's, it's River, uh, Phoenix. River Phoenix playing that role. Yeah. It's, it's like, it's a star studded movie, man. Oh, it is, yeah. Well, by that point, I think Steven Spielberg had some clout. <laughs> well, man, I think I got this in the bag. <laughs> I think he's like, I could get anybody I want. But no, yeah. so you get young Indiana Jones and, you know, his Which dad. I loved that and his, story. I and loved the young Indiana yeah, Jones story. Uh, what yeah. A, I mean, you How all, he gets a scar. Yeah. And his whip. Yeah. yeah. It opens Come on. And the hat. And the hat. And the hat. It opens up on a, on an adventure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. a, a, it's a, a hot open, movie. if you will, instead of a, a, a hot open. Who boy is that because of River Phoenix? Yeah. Well, yes. yeah, that too. Yeah, I knew it. I want to know how he ended up looking so much better than Joaquin. <laughs> they had different fathers, I think. Oh. 
Because I mean, like, one what, is like a River's father must be the mailman or something. Because you're right, they were <laughs> night and day different. There's man. not even a resemblance. No, they don't look anything alike at all. <laughs> I mean, listen, Joaquin Phoenix is an incredible actor. Right, he got he, the talent. He hit every branch on the ugly tree coming down. <laughs> no, he didn't. Oh, it's Actually, not that bad. I mean, it's close to that bad. bad. He's not that it's bad. Close. You need so <laughs> the thing about Joaquin Phoenix is not so much looks. It's his personality as. The way he <laughs> says things and the way he does things. Yeah. There I can't remember the movie, but he was in it and he says something to the actress in the movie and I was like, Yep, right there. <laughs> we would have been together. Yeah. I don't a, even it, care. Forget Mark. It's, it's here we go. It, it was Johnny Depp's nightclub that River Phoenix died out in front of, right? That is correct. The, the Viper, Viper Room. room. Yeah. yeah. Is there's there a few people that have died out in front of that club, isn't there? Or is it just him? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I think he's the most famous to die in front of that. I don't know. I Google like, it. I, I uh, Debbie's on the, Debbie's on the case. Debbie's, Debbie's on the case. The um, Viper room, you said? Yeah. yeah. So here, I got, uh, we have a voicemail from someone. We, we kind of talked about this beforehand, um, before the show about stepping on each other. Uh, and here's Never. here's a voicemail from a listener and a patron. So we're going to take him a little more seriously. Okay. okay. So here we go. Hey guys, it's Anthony from Cleveland. I'm calling as a follow up to a comment I made a couple weeks ago on Patreon uh, for the AG Today. It was me who made the comment about people talking over each other. Um, and I really do, I love the show, love you guys. Uh, but as a listener, when everybody's talking over each other, it's kind of maddening. Um, especially when you want to hear what somebody is saying, they start to say something and somebody speaks over them. Oh, um, boy. It drives, you. Me nor drives me nuts in regular life, too. But uh, <laughs> I thought I'd uh, mention it. Um, not one to normally complain about things, but that a couple weeks ago, the episode with the mayor was particularly uh, a lot of talking over each other, and it just really got to me. So, I made a comment, and now I'm making a phone call. I feel like I can picture but, this guy. But, all in all, you guys are doing a great job. I really enjoy the show. I'll keep listening, and I'll stay a patron. But please, for the love of God, <laughs> let each other finish their sentences. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Uh, thank you, Anthony. Uh, Anth Anthony so, is a great guy. He's been Anthony a very good supporter for many years. Anthony like actually brings up a very good point because I try not to do that, but I may be one of the worst people that does it. So I apologize. We all do it. We all do it. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, if we're being honest, the host is the only one allowed to, but we all do it. <laughs> <laughs> I just... And 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 you know it's just the way conversation goes. But we're we're doing a, a talk show, so we do we should work on that a little bit more. The thing is, you guys do this out of the kindness of your heart, so I, I'm not going to be one to crack the whip and be like, "All right, you got to stop stepping on toes." You know, like let's have fun. We're having fun, right? Everybody's done with their day at work. We come here, we let off steam, we have a good time. But it, but I I do understand, and I know. This is a, this is a, a tried and true trade secret, of course, that everybody knows. A, you gotta, there's an ebb and a flow, and you gotta listen and stuff. So I, that's that's all I'm saying. Is the you know we we should maybe listen to the listeners and try to do it, but we're not going to go through any kind of fuck. Uh, excuse training. me, we're not going to go through any. <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna, <laughs> we're not going to go through any kind of training or anything like that. Of course, we're just going to try to individually police ourselves and go, God, I really want to say something now, but let Bethany finish. Let go. And then I go, you know, that's all. And really, and everybody wants to hear what I have to say. Well, and that's really what it is, right, Cole? It's everybody half, wants to hear Bethany and we're jealous. I mean, that's it. But half my shticks are jumping on top of you guys with one-liners. <laughs> right. But that's why you got to wait because because we don't hear them. They don't, they, they don't have the same impact if you hold on to them. Well, that's true, but sometimes you got to let it go. That's the problem. I know they're like yeah. they're like. Mm, I, well, I was getting ready to make a, a nasty analogy, but they're don't make nasty. No, I stopped myself. It's a family you know? show. Listen, back to yeah. four year old birthdays, though. Okay. You sh you, you know I I can relate to Ezra being frozen. He's so excited. Mm -hmm. I I had the same experience on my fourth birthday. I got my first drum set when I was oh, four. That's so funny you say that, Cole. When I got my first drum set, I was fourteen. <laughs> Or for 13, and I had the same reaction. My mom goes, 
can you go down the laundry room and get a garbage bag? And I opened the laundry room door and there's my drum set. And I was just like, <laughs> and I was 14, 13, 14 years old. So I, I get it. Dude, It's it was big. My I, I came in and my Uncle Eastman was setting it up, dude. Yeah. I, I Little did my mom know. My Uncle Kodak was. You know, how noisy the house was going to be for the next I know. few years. My poor parents. But the good thing is I got it young, so I got good quick. You know, mm -hmm. kids are like little sponges, dude. Yeah, I, I miss being a, a sponge. Now I'm like, uh, like, uh, like a bulletproof vest. Any information <laughs> comes in, it bounces right out of my head. I'm rubber, <laughs> you're glue. Whatever you say, it bounces yeah. off me and sticks to you. By the way, uh, speaking of drums, uh, the there's a clamor in the audience for a money and cigarettes reunion, <laughs> <laughs> oh, and they would also love to see if we can reunite the members of uh, Bloody Diarrhea and have them uh, come and open for us. We could just at the we Christmas could, party. I love it. We could make it's a, a, a blues it. cover band and call it Bloody Diarrhea. Oh, gross! Just tour. You know, though, there is. Uh, I found out because the drummer uh, Jay uh, texted me. He listened to the show the next day, and he's he's like, "Oh man, that was funny." You know, uh, memories, blah, blah blah. He goes, "There is a video, and I have a digitized version of it." <gasps> and so uh, he's, uh, I I'm gonna get it from him, and then we'll. Did we'll, you have long hair? I did. Well, I was in the process of growing it long. It was about. Mid neck, yeah, very sexy, Love and it. um, uh, yeah, I wish I had hair anyway. So, there's some good news for the Children of Gettysburg uh, movie. You got a movie, movie museum. We have a movie, you Whoa. guys uh, got number eight in the top 10 children's museums in the, in the country, in, in the nation, in the, in the nation, on and the USA our, Today. our friends uh, over at the Shriver House got number six for a uh, small museum. Uh huh. In the country. Mm -hmm. So congratulations to Nancy over there. Uh, and then uh, Dutch Apple Museum up in Biglerville, they got Ten. number 10 in the country. Pretty good, Adams County. Pretty good. And then what, what did you say, Debbie, that uh, Gettysburg was voted what? Uh, they're in the running for best small town in the Northeast. In the running for best small town in the Northeast. Who's going to get it for the country? You know, do they do a best? I, I don't know, but I'm thinking I'm, they're just doing it by region. Yeah, and I'm afraid that I mean, look, we all know this. We are the best small town in the Northeast, right? Whether we win or not, we yeah, know it, right? We know it. But I'm afraid if we win, it's gone because every time a town gets voted that, mm -hmm. people go, "Well, we got to move there," and they move there and they destroy it. Well, it's like well, Joe Rogan of, moving to Texas. Yeah, you know. He, I, I, now I, Texas really isn't even Texas anymore. No, because everybody like Joe Rogan has moved to Texas. So, well, go ahead. Berlin, Maryland, that happened too. The exactly. town Berlin, Maryland, because yeah. that's then they felt well. It's a kiss. I don't of know. Death. Maybe somebody would be able to tell me what happened first. They won small best small town, and then they filmed Runaway Bride there. That's the one with Julia Roberts. I would yeah. imagine they filmed Runaway Bride first, but I don't know. Yeah one one or the other happened first, and now people go there, and they're. Their economy on the downtown is not good. Yeah, it's uh, it's terrible. Uh, somebody was telling me uh, today that uh, they their place up in uh, Connecticut was this nice little town, and then when the the Rona happened, all these New Yorkers started moving up and buying up houses and stuff. And she was looking at, she's like, who who are all these people? And like the town went to hell. Mm -hmm. And I mean, but the, every, the country knows when New Yorkers come out, you know, you've lost your, <laughs> <laughs> everybody in the country knows that. But um, yeah, so I mean, we know Gettysburg is the best small town in the Northeast, but let's hope we don't yeah. win Can we keep list. it on the DL, please? Yes, please. Stop yeah. sharing that. Stop <laughs> bragging. Keep it a secret. Um, um, by the way, mm. the answer to the Viper Room question yes. is... He seems to be the only one who's died like outside the club. However, oh. there have been a number of people who like their last public appearance was at the club and like a week or so later. I'm Ooh, not going there ever. Not that they'd ever let me I, in. I don't think it's no. open anymore. It is. It is? It's still operating. Wow. Johnny, but it's Johnny under Depp different management. It's no, not Johnny he Depp. Gave, he turned over his share to somebody else. So it's no longer associated with him. But... Or he's not involved with it, I should say. But or, yes, it does. The Viper still Room exist. sounds kind of creepy, you know, like yeah. you gotta go there and yeah. catch a curse or something. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Lots of lots of near near misses of people like taking drugs and oh, alcohol sure. and stuff like that and passing. Well, I out think that's what there, it was known but... for. You know, oh yeah, like real absolutely. Studio, studio Fifty Four kind mm -hmm. of. Yeah, that's um, so not my scene. 
So did you know that uh, six Ugh. questions? So there's a there's a gang, the Gettys gang, and six questions is a member, and he go his street name is Six Q now. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> He's, so every time we see him now, we got to call him 6Q. Eventually, you know that's going to get shortened to cue ball. <laughs> that would be great. And there it is. <laughs> cue ball. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Let's see. What if I did? <laughs> I was a little off at the time. Anyway, so six questions is now 6Q. Let it be known. <laughs> and uh, apparently there's serious consequences if you don't uh, call him by a street name. If you mess with him. I'm, I'm pretty much decided. I'm just going to call him Cue ball now. I yeah. Think, I think I'm going to run with it. If anybody I'm else out little... there you know, wants to run with it, please feel well, free to join. Let's see, let's see if uh, they can at least get 6Q to catch on first. Because if that doesn't catch on, That's how nicknames work, though. There's a fast progression, you know? Well, yeah, there can be. Yeah, right. You build on them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I... How sad is it that when you said Very. that, I literally thought he lived on a street called 6Q? Oh, my God. Well, we're not in England. Yeah. Well, <laughs> no, I, his street, know, like, because he's in a gang. I get it. I get it. Aww. I get it now. A lot of people liked Indiana Jones' Last Crusade. Uh, Otto says it just seems like it's a, a such a bigger production, and they had that World War One tank, which was very cool. Mm. Uh, John B says Last Crusade. It's also the one we learn why he was named Indiana. That's Good so true. Yes, yes. Right at the end of the movie. Um, he must hate watching shows like The View. Oh, I don't know who you're talking about, but I certainly do. Um, Jim says, maybe Matt and crew could learn American Sign Language to do the show like that instead of talking to avoid stepping on each other. I think that's, that's where the Jim. view comment came from. Uh, oh, 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 got you. Oh, okay, so you're talking about Anthony hating the view because they all jump on each other. Mm. That, Yeah, that could be. They do tend to do that over there. In fact, I've got, uh, I believe I have audio of that just in case. Here we go. Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh please like you can't laugh at the beauty of that that's hysterical um, I love it uh, exactly did you ever watch the music man when mm -hmm. they do the song cheep 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 no cheep, 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 cheep. no I gotta tell you I uh, have not really been ever uh, a fan of musicals so I, I avoid them like the plague I haven't well, seen then we can't be friends I haven't seen uh, Swinging in the Hills or whatever that Julie Andrews one is what's it called <laughs> Seriously? With the Nazis, sound, talking of about the sound of music. Sound of music. I haven't Swinging seen that. The... <laughs> you really haven't seen that? <laughs> no, Colby. And don't tell me you have. I have I... numerous. times. Ah, oh, please. I had the biggest crush on the oldest uh, daughter, daughter in that family. Uh, Good God, dude. Liesl. I had. I had it bad. I had was it? Bad. I was gonna say Liesl. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I've seen it numerous times. James says we were. No, I, I, I don't. Like musical. Now here's the, I'll I've been okay. singing it the whole time I've been here tonight. Well, I haven't heard you singing. What did you say? I've been singing, singing The Hills Are Alive with the sound. No, you haven't. I have, too. She has. I've heard her. Really? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. In my big opera voice. <clears throat> it's a good thing I didn't <laughs> hear it. Drops on roses. Um, yeah, no. Okay, so here. <laughs> so here's what I do like about musicals uh, when they end. No. What I like about musicals is when someone else does them in a non musically way i'll give you an example there's a song i heard bobby at first i heard bobby darren's version it's called on the street where you live oh. that's my fair lady i'm sorry first i heard dean martin's version and it's like sloppy drunk dean martin he sound and it boom, boom, do, 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 do. and he's like, i have every and it's all you know i'm like oh this is cool and then i heard bobby darren's version it's a little more upbeat and swingy and yeah. i'm like oh that's pretty good and then somebody was like what is it from my fair lady my fair lady and then uh, I was like, oh, that's from a musical. And then I found uh, Luck Be a Lady Tonight. That's from a musical. Guys and Dolls. One Night in Bangkok. <laughs> Watch your mouth. Uh, <laughs> that's no from a musical, too. Um, and then let's see what else. There was um, One Night in Bangkok. Now you got me thinking about One Night in Bangkok and the world. Your oyster. I don't know that, that one. one. <laughs> <laughs> it's from the musical Chess. Never heard of it. I think we can talk over each other if we just say it in sync like that. Yeah, I, I think, think that's that. the workaround. <laughs> um, well, there's a whole bunch of songs that those guys did that are from musicals. 
which because uh, those were the musicals that were popular. At yeah, the time. musicals were also more popular back then. Oh, I feel of course. Like too. So, but my point is, I was introduced to the music of the musicals by Manly Men, and uh, well, because you know, there's a certain way of singing musicals did that annoys you, me. Did you? Yes, he did. Just knock Howard Julie Keel Andrew. in front of me. Who? Howard Keel. I don't know him. No, no, no. But you know how like musicals are all grandiose in the way they teach them how to sing. It's, ooh, it's just very this, opera esque. Yes, but it's not style. opera esque. It's like it's it's pseudo it's like opera. attention <sighs> hounds trying to be opera esque. I don't know. I don't like the style at all. But the music is good when in the hands of someone else doing it in a different way. I like the big band style of doing musicals. Can how do you feel please? about Mary Poppins? The original? The ori- not the new one. The new, we can't even put that in the same conversation as Mary Poppins. That We might call that Charlie Poppins <laughs> on this show. What, I don't know what you're talking about. But, uh, Mary, the, oh, the, uh, was that Julie Andrews too? No. Who was no. that? The Emily original. Um, Emily. No, the original. The Julie original. Andrews. Is, Julie Andrews. Is the original yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah we don't, we're not talking about remakes. We're talking about real, yeah. the original things. Can so, you just do me a favor? And that was Dick Van Dyke in there too, right? It was, dude. Correct. Yeah, okay. That I saw as a kid, but I had no choice because it was movie day at school and that's what they chose. Also, it's Dick chim, Van Dyke. Chim, 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 I mean, di- with, that, with that British accent, how could you not love that movie? Easily. <laughs> You need to watch it again as an older... I will have to try to do that. Can you just do me a favor and on your downtime, whenever you have some, uh in five years, can you just pull up Howard Keel? Just him singing. After he goes to the gym with me. Yeah, I'll go home and watch a musical. No, no, no. You don't have to watch the musical that it's with. Just pull it up. Okay. Like on YouTube and just listen to Howard Keel and his voice. You getting excited about the next episode of uh, Masters of the Air? Oh, I got it. So, okay, now I'm into Masters of the Air. We're, wow. we're beyond, yeah. we're beyond the music. There's now. a segue. There's a 360 <laughs> turn. The Tuske- we need the, more on this show, dang it. Tuskegee Airmen <laughs> are in, and uh, I'm, I'm, now, uh, I'm now into it. It's it did, good. It, 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 it took going to the camp. I'm not trying to give any spoilers, but you know what camp I'm referring to. Yes. And and that's when it started getting good for me. Uh, correct. Me too. I, I, I really got into it um, when they got into the game. Because now there's like, you know... There's something sinister going on, and they've yeah. got to they've got to try to escape, or what are they going to do? And then and now you got the Tuskegee Airmen coming in, and it's D Day. Now Which, it's really getting dude, good. P51s are the sexiest plane ever. Mm, they I are nice. Them. I they love them. are nice for sure. Um, bed nose and broomsticks. Bed knobs. Yeah, <laughs> that knew. was one of my favorites too. Uh, I think I like how we're having two simultaneous, I know. very Listen, different conversations. You segued is... before I was ready to segue. <laughs> See, so you therefore, right, this is Bethany's show. Here. Yeah. So screw you. I'm going home. I'm going home. home. <laughs> screw you guys. No, no. So the uh, 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 yeah, it, it's getting better. I mean, it's getting good now. It's the one with Haley Mills and the uh, the Parent Trap. Parent Trap. Uh, good one. Uh, the um the the other one we just said. Herbie. Uh, Herbie, yeah, Herbie. Herbie the love bug. So the the chimney ones. Um, what was it? Mary Poppins. Mm-hmm. I liked uh, now, this. This wouldn't be counted as a musical probably nowadays, but I think it is actually a musical. Is the Davy Crockett shows from Disney? Yeah, the old ones. Those are musicals. I don't, it's not musicals. They but sing. It's... They sing in every single episode, though. It's but like that was just episodes. a Disney thing. They did that. There was always a song. That's why the, I say the Zorro one is similar. There's often singing. In you it. know what is not a musical. a musical? Swiss Family Robinson. Yeah. Ooh, good. That's oh, a good brother, one. where art thou? Yes. <gasps> great That's a good one. That's oh, a great that one. Movie. That's different. Dude, best. The best line in that whole movie is when they escape. They they break out of prison. And uh, and George Clooney is coming clean about there not being any treasure, and the one guy's starting to get mad, and he goes, "I'm gonna be 86 years old by the time I get out of prison." And the dumb one looks at him and goes, "I'll only be 82." <laughs> <laughs> like he's just won some kind of freaking gold bar, dude. I love that movie is great. Yeah, um, it is a great movie. Oh, and uh, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, that was <laughs> a really good. Oh yes, Matt, what's happening on this show? <laughs> I don't know. I don't. Know. There's too much shows going on. So on so Fiddler Anthony, on the Roof. Hold on. Uh-huh. I'm gonna talk to Anthony now. Okay, go ahead. Okay, Anthony is 
Sorry. <laughs> is it more annoying that we talk over each other or that we're having two simultaneous? Yeah. <laughs> the answer is worse. The Which answer is, is probably worse. yes. <laughs> Just trying to keep the, the audience feel, brain power strong. I feel like we might be heading down a road. We are heading down a road we to are. our guest. And our guest <laughs> Our guest today is Free. Sarah, and Sarah has a uh, a bakery on York Street. Uh, it's brand new. It's called Sweeter Than Sap. And you know, um, when I was a kid, I I tried sap once that was bleeding out of a pine tree, and it was not sweet at all. So we're gonna find out what the uh, dilio is with uh, it's with that sweeter name. than. I understand. Well, oh, sap. that's true. But I mean, it's 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 implying that it's at least sweet. But this is sweeter than it. So we're going to find out what exactly she means by that. Maybe it's maple sap. You know, like. But even that, I don't think, is sweet until you do something to it, isn't it? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a, I'm a, she, will, she will tell us all of these things because she knows and we don't. So we'll be right back after these words with our guest Sarah from Sweeter Than Sap on York Street. And uh, I hope she brought some samples. But we don't know. We'll find out. I don't know. I'm starving. I know. Me too. We'll talk to you later. And then we're going to talk about food. Want yeah. to promote your Gettysburg business? Send an email to sales at addressinggettysburg.com. Hey, Gettys Nerds, 2024 is shaping up to be a fun year for addressing Gettysburg, and we want you to join us. Our Get Out of the Car tours put together and led by licensed battlefield guide Lewis Trott kick off in April and will be available at a later date for the first time ever on our YouTube channel. Speaking of our YouTube channel, Gettysburg National Military Park's Winter Lecture Series is available exclusively over there from January through March. So be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss a single one. We have much more in the works, so be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and now for free on Patreon. We hope to get to meet and spend time with many of you this year as we spread the word about the Battle of Gettysburg and the Civil War. Help us teach the masses that history is not boring. Movies and documentaries about history are spread out across the internet, and their quality is often suspect. History Fix delivers curated historic programming to your preferred device using their website or branded apps. Join History Fix for movies, documentaries, short films, and how-tos. Addressing Gettysburg podcast fans receive 20% off their first annual subscription. So what are you waiting for? Sign up at www.historyfix.com and use promo code ADGBURG. That's A-D-G-B-U-R-G. Want the freshest cup of coffee in Gettysburg? Then visit Bantam Roasters, formerly 82 Cafe at 82 Steinware Avenue. They roast all of their coffee in-house, and they have a full coffee bar to keep you caffeinated during your trip. Visit them at www.raggededgerc.com for their menu and shipping options for all of their freshly roasted coffee. Use promo code HANCOCK for 10% off your order in the cafe. This episode of Addressing Gettysburg is brought to you in part by me, audiobook narrator Mike Scott. Narrator of Savas Beattie's Bloody Autumn, the Shenandoah Valley Campaign of 1864, and, unlike anything that ever floated, The Monitor and Virginia and the Battle of Hampton Roads. If you are an author or publisher interested in having your titles produced as audiobooks, or even just in learning more about the process, give me a shout. You can find my contact info on my website, mikescottvoice.com. That's mikescottvoice.com. And Civil War Trails. It's the world's largest open-air museum, and they offer over 1,300 sites across six states. Drive the Gettysburg Campaign turn by turn, paddle to Frederick Douglass's birthplace, or hike to remote earthworks and artillery positions. Visit CivilWarTrails.org to request a brochure and explore their interactive map. Follow Civil War Trails and create some history of your own. You're listening to the Dressing Gettysburg Podcast. Listening to the man who refuses to travel while single. <laughs> I love that I never read these before I start doing it. <laughs> okay, alright. Put that on a t-shirt, <laughs> holy hell. <laughs> 
You're listening to the man who refuses to travel while single. Here's Matt. I love when Veronica pops in and says something. I saw her yesterday. Oh, how's she doing? Good. I'll tell you during the news. Okay. Veronica. Put that on my notes there. In the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have Sarah from Sweeter Than Sap, which is a, um, oh, Sarah, you got to move into the camera. Which uh, I don't know. I can't see <laughs> on the monitor. <laughs> Where does she need to go, Colby? I was just going to have you point the camera down a little bit. Oh, so point it down. Like, okay. Yeah. Oh. All right. Sorry. It's too high. <laughs> All right. Let me there you know. Go. Just, okay. Just right. Thank you. Just right. All right. Uh, sweeter than sap. It's a new bakery on York Street. I went in there the other day. It smelled delicious. She was putting the icing on these giant Cinnabons. They looked like turtles. They were huge. Yeah, they're massive. They're right. Like everyone says, oh, they're the size of a dinner plate. So, yeah, they are. Yeah. And like you could feed a family of four with oh, this. Or, people, or, or me. Or just me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Now, did you bring did you bring a sample? I did. Oh, God but, bless you know, America. I can always bring back just come back on a regular basis. Yeah. Well, Bye. yes, you absolutely can. You're always welcome. <laughs> We're here, here every Thursday. All right. Yeah. <laughs> and we like we like the idea of regulars. So, yeah. you know, you want to just drop in because you're bored one day after work, uh, just do it. You know, there's a doorbell, you rang it and come on in. Yeah. Now, okay, but you, you look very young. Yeah. <laughs> How old are you? I'm twenty four. Twenty four. Yeah. And I understand that you um you you are you're quite accomplished actually. I have, a, I have your CV here. Oh. Uh, you have an associate's degree in baking and pastry arts from Johnson and Wales. It's actually a bachelor's. A bachelor's. Yes, I have okay. a bachelor's in baking and pastry and food service management. Got it. Okay, yep. that was the next. That was the next thing. It's yep. there. Okay, foods from Johnson and Wales, May twenty twenty two. Yes. Uh, so you're only two years out of school. Yeah. You opened Sweeter Than Sap on York Street in August of last year. Right. And Sap, S-A-P, it's capitalized. Why? Yes. It's actually my initials, so Sarah Ann Parrish. So, uh, yeah, when I was there you go. 16, my aunt and I were just trying to figure out an idea because I've known for a while this is what I wanted to do. So we were just tossing around some ideas, and she was like, well, what about Sweeter Than Sap? And I was like, that's perfect. That is perfect. <laughs> yeah. Now, so. did, did you did you grow up here? Yeah, so I actually... Um, not necessarily Gettysburg, but like I'm from Hanover and then I went to school in New Oxford, but then I also did uh, like half of my junior and senior year at Gettysburg at the tech prep. Okay. So I've been in the area. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And um, you, uh, you specialize in cakes and pastries. Everything is customizable. Yes. So if I wanted a cake of Colby's face, you could do that. <laughs> it would yeah. be a frightening uh, thing, but be, you could do it. It would be a good yeah. looking cake. <laughs> <laughs> But no, you could do anything really. Yeah. Now, how do they get like pictures on? You know, did you ever see those where like you have a picture? Did you uh, ever see those? That's what I said. Did you ever see those? <laughs> You're asking somebody who probably does that once a day. No, you don't do that though. That's that's um, beneath you. You don't do edible images. Like see? you have to have an edible <laughs> printer, and I'm just. So, but how does that work though? Uh, it's just edible ink, and it works the same way as a printer. And, and you put the cake under it, and it just kind of airbrushes it on there, um, sort of? You do, like, edible, like, wafer paper. Uh-huh. Yeah, and so it just prints on the wafer paper, and oh, you put it oh, oh. on the buttercream oh, on the okay. cakes. And yeah. you can even do it to cookies, too. Yeah. Yeah, so. I always thought that was weird. I went to a funeral once, and they had the dead person's no, face. No, you are yes, kidding. Yes, and I was like, I, we're a little weird with our traditions and culture with the uh, funerals in this country some people go a little crazy that's beyond well it was weird you know when they put the Literally knife in and they yeah. cut the person's forehead off and you know it was it was strange it was strange and so but i i don't like that i yeah. don't like that yeah so you don't do that no i don't do that no not, not not only because you don't have a printer but also it's a little a little yeah it's a little beneath you yeah you you have higher quality stuff <laughs> i went in there the other day to introduce myself because you know Big star, you know, she I don't want her to be nervous. So I go in and I say, you know, I said, she laughed, <laughs> which was appropriate. <laughs> we all laugh. I, so, you know, uh, and I wanted to check the place out and it smelled delicious. I, you know, I told her I'm, I'm doing keto, so I can't try anything, but, you know, it looks good. Smells However, good. However, I'm not. She's okay. not. So yeah, you yeah. could so have whenever, brought, yeah. whenever, like if you ever need a taster, like, yeah. hey, we're trying something yeah. new. Bethany, is this good? Yeah. Yeah. I'm right down the street. <laughs> well, right we always street. have extras on Sundays. So, like, stop by Sunday, 6 o'clock when we're closed. Really? We have extra stuff. Usually, I just end up donating it to, like, the Brafferton or different places oh. in the area, like the hospitals or urgent care. So, yeah, because I don't want to waste anything. Right. Are you so. closed Mondays? 
Close Mondays and Tuesdays. So then it would just go to waste and right. get stale. So you just, oh, yeah. that's okay. So yeah. that's nice. So then you donate that. Yeah. Look at you. So, yeah. okay. So you're 24 years old. Mm-hmm. So two years out of school, I consider that you're two years old. Because, <laughs> and, and because you're, you know, the experience, the life experience is just beginning now. Right. But here you are, a business owner. Mm-hmm. And and it looks pretty successful. And when I went in there, she couldn't care less about talking to me. She's like, oh, hi. And, you know, she's doing her thing. She's got to work. She's running her business. And uh, I was very impressed with that. Thank you. Because usually I go in, people are starstruck. And they're like, oh, my God, I can't believe you're here. Pictures, you know, things like that. But you don't know me. So, so no, but in all seriousness. <laughs> Sarah, don't believe a word you said. <laughs> in all seriousness, I'm just teasing. Uh, but I go... You you have it together. You've got this great place. How did you get set up so quickly out of school? Did, were you baking at home and selling cakes to friends or something? Yeah. So, um, I mean, I know that this is what I wanted. Like when I was eight, I kind of like started out and I was like, yeah, I'm interested in baking. My parents, you know, fully supportive. They were just like, go do whatever because they don't like to bake. So then um, it kind of just in 2016, I was like, why am I waiting? Like I can just start now. So then in high school, I was just baking out of like my kitchen at home and I was just making like cakes and cake jars and taking it to school. And like my friends would buy it. My teachers would buy it. My family would like always have me like do stuff for all the family gatherings. And then, um, it kind of got to the point where uh, my sister-in-law was like, hey, well, we're doing this um, kind of like a, like a vendor show out at Meadowbrook. And she was like, you should sign up for it. And so I was like, okay, great. So um, I think that was maybe in like 2021. Um, it was a few years ago. But I basically started doing all these like vendor shows and just setting up in a tent and kind of just like, you know, I, I didn't really know it to expect and what to do. I just kind of was like, this is what I want to do and I know where I want to get to. And so I just went, did these shows and then eventually ended up in a marketplace and um, getting like a retail license there. And at the same time, just going through school and getting everything to the point where I had enough enough experience um, to just really like go for it and start a brick and mortar. Cause I want to do this when I'm young. I want to start when I'm young yeah, and, smart. and everything. So yeah. Yes. Yeah, and I, I was just, I, I couldn't wait to get started. So yeah. being so able to do it is great. You say you knew you wanted to be a baker since Yeah. What is it about baking that struck you? Like, what, where did the, what's the passion that you have for baking? Where does um, it come from? I think, honestly, I mean, when I was younger, I always saw, like saw my parents in the kitchen, and they would be cooking, but I was like, I love to cook. But Are they chefs? They're not chefs. They're okay. just they just like to do just like cooking at home. Um, it's fun. They're yeah. mom and dad. Yeah. yeah. Oh well, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they so, gotta make you meals. <laughs> yeah. They cook um, for her. Right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, but it was really just like I I don't even know if it was like I saw TV shows or something. I just kind of was like, oh, well, I'm interested in baking and. I don't know like what pushed me towards it. It was like, oh, I'm, I just like, I enjoy doing this and it allows me to be creative, um, but it also allows me to do math and science and it's a whole thing. But so it you also... lost me there. <laughs> Baking is the only thing I'm cooking wise I'm, I'm okay at because of the math. Yeah. Like See, that's, that's that's interesting. I'm the other way. I would rather like just heat something up and throw a piece of meat on it and figure it out. <laughs> like what was it I made the other day, Cindy, uh, that ended up being really good. <laughs> and I said, I just made it. Oh, the seared tuna. I mean, yeah, I made a seared mm-hmm. tuna and I made a, a sauce and I just threw a bunch of stuff in there. And I was like, oh, she's going to hate this. This is going to be gross. And then we tasted <laughs> it. And we're like, oh. That's actually pretty good. She's like, don't forget what you put in there. And I'm like, I already did. Uh-huh. But like, that's the way I like to cook. Yeah. And, uh, but no, and that's why when, uh, now I'm just, I'm also, I, I don't really eat baked goods too often anyway. So, you know. That's part of the problem. <laughs> what? It, truthfully, is that I enjoy baking, but then it, Somebody needs to eat it. Do right. you know what I mean? Right. And it's usually yeah. me or Mark, and we don't need. I mean, look, we don't need more of that. I would like to live without diabetes. <laughs> the beatus, we call it. The beatus. The beatus. The beatus. The beatus. <laughs> so what? 
what did you do in your with that kind of stuff? Did you just I hey, I'm going to take it to school, you I guess? Yeah, it was more so just like my parents taking it to work or my my older brother, he has a huge sweet tooth cuz I don't eat sweets. Uh like Really? I, yeah, more of like meat and potatoes. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I, but not really like I'll I'll eat like a cookie here and there, but I'm not really interested. That's in it. interesting. So how do you know then if if your baked goods are are good if you don't try them? I mean, you obviously try them, <laughs> I right? I try them, but it's more on like intuition. I just usually have like a gut feeling on how things. It's it's a weird it's a weird thing. How are your butter cookies? Do you make butter cookies? I've had Yeah, I've made them before. How are they? Pretty good. Are they buttery? <laughs> yes. I had a friend whose wife made butter cookies and she would like make a box of them and send them when we would record a show. Eric, the producer, this was his wife, Katie. And the, the box, it would only be maybe, you know, this big, like Mm -hmm. what it was at eight inches long and, you know, I don't know, three or four inches wide and, you know, about three or four inches deep and she'd fill it with cookies, but it weighed four pounds because she put so much butter in it and they were the greatest Mm -hmm. things in the world. The key to a butter cookie is what? All the butter. All the butter. All the butter. That you can find in the neighborhood. Yeah. Put it in there. <laughs> yeah. It's so good. You now, have to have a good butter too. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you I, use Amish butter? Um, I use double A grade butter. So. Is that, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's do. pretty good okay. butter. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's, we, we went to it's a. It's double a, grade A. Yeah. Is, is regular store-bought butter singular A or. It's like B. Yeah. Oh, it's B. It's Where do you like get double grade A? F. <laughs> I'm, <joking>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I get all my stuff through uh, my supplier. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, we went to a farmer's market and they had um, Amish butter. Mm. And it's just a big chunk of yeah, butter like a glob. wrapped in paper. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, I have to get this. I don't know why, but it looks so much better than <laughs> stick of butter. Yeah. All right. So you, you decide then that you're going to do this. You go to the marketplace first as a vendor, mm-hmm. right? You set up, what is that, like weekends or... Um, yeah, Sporadically. it started out just as Saturdays and then started doing like Saturday, Sundays. And then I kind of like started doing Fridays in there. Um, but it was mainly Saturdays for like my big busy days. And then when do you decide you're going to do brick and mortar and what made you decide to do it here? Um, I knew I always wanted brick and mortar and Honestly, my parents were always like, you have to wait. You have to wait till after college. And I was like, why am I waiting? Like, this is That's what I, I was do. like, I was it was so frustrating. Yeah. And my parents, I mean, I'm glad that they made me wait um, till I was out of college. And I mean, college was enough and I was working part time and trying to run a business yeah. all at the same time. So that was a kind of crazy part of my life. Um, but yeah, it was kind of just like it. I was like, I want something of my own. And as soon as, like even right before I was graduating, I was trying to uh, look up and find places. And at first I was like, oh, maybe I want to go to Hanover because I was like, I don't know. Like, I don't know if Gettysburg, I was like, I don't know. I wasn't sure about it. Um, but then I did the marketplace here and I was like, yeah, it's a great crowd, like great locals. I love the locals yeah. here. Um, and then actually it was my father-in-law. He I had always like talked to them. Father-in-law, you're married already? Not married, but oh. like it. We just use the term because it's okay. Because you're like, gonna get married. Yeah. 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 Um, and basically, he had found. Uh, I think it was just like an ad online, and he was like, "Why don't you go check it out?" Because I was, I was having such a hard time finding places, or I'd call, and then I wouldn't get a call back. And yeah. then it's very I, common. Yeah, and then I, I, uh, so he sent me the link and I think he actually ended up calling like the real estate agent and being like oh hey like she's interested and then I called and I was like I need to set up like an appointment right away to go see this place and um I walked in and I was like this feels right like this this feels good this feels right and um so it's just been kind of perfect and I mean, of course, all the buildings in Gettysburg are a little bit on the smaller side, especially when mm-hmm. they decide to, um, yeah. you know, split up the buildings. But um, I didn't want something super big because I wanted to stay true to myself and like true to like my values. I want to make everything. I want to make everything by hand and mm-hmm. I don't want it to be mass produced. And mm, Good. Yeah. So, you can taste the difference though. Yeah. Oh, 100. Yeah. Right. Can't stand oh. mass produced. Like when you go to the supermarket bakery and you get a cake there and it's just the bland it's bland right yeah. there's nothing to it not yeah. enough butter no well it's they don't use butter <laughs> what do they use i like crisco 
Oh, or that's like hydrogenated shortening. Oh. It doesn't melt in your body. So I would recommend not eating it. <laughs> really? Yeah, because um it has a melting point of 112. And, and we're not 112. No. no, if you are, that's very concerning. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're probably about to yes. die. Yeah. 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 Okay, that's interesting. So yeah, so that's all the more reason to go yeah. to sweeter than sap right. because you use real butter. Yeah. You don't use margarine. No. You don't use uh, Crisco. Right. You don't use hydrogenation paint, whatever you yeah, said. Yeah, hydrogenated shortening. There you go. Yeah. Uh, what is shortening bread, by the way? Is it bread made with shortening? Yeah. And yeah. why does Mama's little baby love it? I don't know. I don't either. Because it <laughs> worked well with the song. I was gonna say it, it works. Go ahead. So. <laughs> baking question yeah for all those up people out there salted or unsalted butter unsalted unsalted butter yes why because you can control the amount of salt and salt makes a huge difference on your baked goods that's 100 percent true so yes. unsalted butter and then you pour salt in as needed as if needed. needed see that's yes. what i always said but people were like oh it's already in there and can just it's so much easier and i'm like no yeah okay yeah and then see i knew i was right yeah and then i didn't say you were wrong <laughs> other people have oh <laughs> um can you give us an idea of some of the stuff that because i know bakeries uh sometimes use diff, you know they focus on different types of baked goods so mm -hmm. what is your menu look like um so Every day, I try to have something a little bit different from week to week, but usually every day we have like a variety of cookies, a variety of cupcakes, um, cheesecakes, and then also like coffee cakes, brownies. And then um, I also try to switch it up where um, in the case I'll have something different. Usually on Saturdays I'll have chocolate eclairs or cream puffs. Eclairs are really fit, like a popular, it's a popular, They're fantastic, huge thing. Um, and then I'll do like strawberry shortcakes. Those have become more popular recently. Now, wait, what is shortcake? Um, so the way I make it is I make like a sweet biscuit. Um, and it's mainly like butter, flour, oats, brown sugar. Oh, you put oats in I it? I put oats in it, yeah. What about hall? Oh. No. You don't put hall in there? No. She doesn't know what you're talking about. She no. knows She's hall and 24. oats. She's oh, heard yeah. of hall and oats. <laughs> They're making a comeback now. <laughs> Whatever. It's her parents' generation, their music. That's her parents' generation, I'm assuming. How old are your parents? Um, Like 50. There you go. Yeah. All yeah. the notes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So shortening bread. I'm sorry. Shortcake. Yes. Yeah. And then just like Chantilly cream and strawberries. Now, what's Chantilly cream? Just whipped cream, basically, well, with a fancy name. But they made it in Chantilly. <laughs> yeah. Um, And uh, Oops, and whipped cream is literally just heavy cream that you whip until it's like kind of airy, right? Yeah, with usually like powdered sugar and vanilla. Powdered sugar. I was going to yeah. ask. See, how, a lot yeah. of people don't put the... So around here, mm -hmm. a lot of people don't put the sugar in. They just whip the cream, and it's just not... Yeah, it's, it's not, not the, the same. same. Mm -mm. No. Cindy, can we stop uh, keto for a month and try her bakery? <laughs> <laughs> For a month. <laughs> For a month. I was just well, we going to say a day or no, two. No, no, no. We got a lot of catching up to do. <laughs> uh, I mean, it sounds really good. Everything's good in moderation. So, yeah. You know. uh, yeah. yeah. But it's a mental thing. You know? it's like, <laughs> I'm excited about the cinnamon rolls you were talking about. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm yeah. telling you. Yeah. Th they were huge. Yeah. That's Mark's favorite. My husband. Mm -hmm. Favorite is favorite thing. You know what you should cinnamon do? Rolls. When's his birthday? January 16th. Okay. Next year. You get our anniversary is coming up. Okay, for the anniversary, yeah. get a cinnamon mm -hmm. and put candles in it. It's the size of a cake. I mean, it's mm -hmm. they're huge. I yeah. mean, I'm telling you. And if he can eat the whole thing, it's my <laughs> he hero. can eat the whole thing. That's what the uh, metformin is for. It takes care of that sugar and can just the keep what eat. metformin. What is that? It's a diabetes medication. <laughs> <laughs> So that you take the medication so that you can continue, continue the bad habits it, yeah. that cause the diabetes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, that have you is, met Mark? I mean, yeah, How we went through this. His life. He barely says hello. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so if okay. a guy comes in and orders a cinnamon roll and doesn't talk to you and won't look at you, it's mm -hmm. probably my husband. Right. All right. If he just, just looks away. at the cinnamon roll and grunts, <laughs> <laughs> that's her husband. Yeah. <laughs> now, okay. So now you're okay. So you're very accomplished. We were Cindy and I were talking beforehand. She's very impressed with you, and and she's I'm like, why? And she said, well, she 
graduated uh, college 20 minutes ago and uh, 21 <laughs> minutes ago. Sure. Or, or, or she nice, started a Whatever, business. I can't do math. She started a business. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, that is impressive. And now here you're, you're talking about your father-in-law, so you're essentially married, even though you're not legally married. Yeah. You're with a guy that you're going to marry. Yeah. Were you raised in like a in the church or something like that? You seem very c unlike other people your age, which tells me that you have some sort of a religious background or, or a good family. Were you homeschooled? <laughs> um, actually, I wasn't homeschooled, but um, like my boyfriend was. He was homeschooled, so it rubbed off on you. Yeah, the, the so, homeschooling. Yeah, uh, but the um, homeschooling. Skilling. I think it Skill. helped too that my parents are still like in their marriage. They're married, yeah, and so I think. That's been a, like a huge like part of like growing up, and I think my whole family is pretty super close. So um, I it know really does make a difference. You have a good yeah. support yeah. system. Yeah, yeah. so that's it's, nice. Yeah, even just like because you said your aunt. I'm sorry to interrupt yeah. you. You said your aunt. Yeah. Was encouraging you to do this stuff. Yeah, yeah. My aunt, my whole, my whole family, my grandmothers, uh, like my uncles, like everyone in my family is so super supportive, and even. Like my friends and my coaches from high school, they're I'm still in contact with them and they're still super supportive. So good. I think it's just mainly like a good support system. And you and your future hubby were high school sweethearts or Um We actually met at work when I uh, I worked at Giant down the street and we we uh were when in, did you work at giant uh like 2020 to like 2020 yeah i thought you looked familiar yeah okay, so that's I was, where i've seen yeah you. i was, yeah, a, I was okay. a giant direct shopper and he was too and um i i mean even when i first saw him i was like yeah he's the one really yeah yeah it was just like a gut feeling i saw him and he was like in the corner somewhere laughing and I was like, oh man, he's the one. And I, I was like, just by oh, the way no. he's laughing. Yeah, just by the way he was just in the corner and what? he was just so vibrant and That's laughing. That's funny. And, Did yeah. you see Cindy how told me when when uh, we went on our first date and I, I tripped over the curb and mm -hmm. she said, "That's he's the one." That's when she knew, <laughs> right? Right, Sin? Yep. Yep. There you go. Go ahead. But did you see how she reacted when you mentioned him? She went, she, you know, she totally, <laughs> <She's> like, yeah. <laughs> and then when she was talking about, was really cute. when she saw him in the corner, she, she almost went like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> that's cute. Yeah, Thank that you. is cute. Yeah. Well, that's, that's very nice. Yeah. And I, I wish you all the best with I this, know, this bakery. Thank so you. cool. And I'm, I, I really do because you're so smart to get going with yeah. this now. Um, you know, it's hard to run a business, mm -hmm. you know, but it seems like that you are you have the metal to do it, <laughs> and um, and you've got a good support system behind you, yeah. and that's really important. Mm -hmm. And now you've been on this show, and oh, wait, 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 what's <sighs> what's almost as good as this show, but not as popular is Lifestyle Magazine. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're you're gonna be in Lifestyle Magazine. Yeah, they have an issue coming out in May. Um, so it's just going to be featuring the bakery and I think just like how I, I got started and everything. So I, I'm pretty excited. They took, that is awesome. yeah, they took a lot of photos, so I'm not sure what you're going to see in there, but yeah, they took a lot of photos. So, well, let's see here. You're getting a lot of love in the comments section. Uh, <laughs> Marie Bingaman, she, she has been telling me about you for a while and she says her cinnamon rolls are banging. <laughs> Without the G. All so caps, you know. no yeah, G. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and let's see here. What else here? Met Foreman only does so much. Okay. <laughs> so keep that in mind. I know. Okay. I know. That's why he's also on the other medication. <laughs> um, Hall and Oates are in a bitter legal batter, battle and they're batter. Did you hear that? I'm yeah. thinking of cake. cake. Mm -hmm. And there is a restraining order between them. Wow. That's sad. Um, let's see. Let's see. I saw some other things up here too. Where was that? Uh, oh, did you make pies for pie day? I didn't. No. Okay. Next year. Do that next year. I was going to say that's today, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, and her cupcakes are yummy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, gr somebody else said, uh, I, don't, I can't find it, but I remember they said something. I, I think they're looking online cause I, I think it was Grant and he's in Australia. Uh, here their half and half Oreo cheesecake looks tasty. Oh yeah, that's a new one. Mm -hmm. I just uh, did that last weekend. So the bottom half is fully chocolate with Oreos in it, and the top is vanilla and has Oreos all throughout it. <laughs> Killing me, Smalls. <laughs> so oh. I feel like we should have her on again when the article comes out, so that we can get food. I know. Yeah, to celebrate the article and lifestyle, let's have you come on and bring just a cheesecake. Bring 
platters of cheesecake and yes. cinnamon rolls and a bunch of cookies. Yes. Yeah. That'll be my cheat meal for the month that like, I won't eat for the rest for of the, the month. year. Yeah. I Good know. Lord. What? Cheesecake's what? Cream cheese. There's two types, right? Mm -hmm. Cream cheese and ricotta. Yeah. I just. Ricotta. Used... I'm sorry. Ricotta. Someone actually mentioned to me about goat cheese the other day. I love goat cheese. And he said mm. the best cheesecake he ever had was made out of goat cheese. No kidding. Yeah. And I was like, I've never even heard of that. Yeah. So I was like, maybe I'll have to try that one day. But I just use cream cheese. Yeah. So. And are you a Philadelphia cream cheese kind of gal? Um, I actually, I don't use Philadelphia cream cheese. That's sacrilegious. I You're know. in Pennsylvania, damn You're it. You're in Pennsylvania. What do you use? Um, I just get the cream cheese from my supplier. Yeah, so you yeah. get to distribute. You get you get bulk. Yeah, yeah. It comes in three pound blocks. Jeez, that sounds oh like my heaven. God. Yeah. So, God, as a small child, a there's cheese. a reason I look the way uh, I do. Okay, <laughs> stop so, that. No, but it's true because my mom would get cream cheese, like a block of cream cheese, mm -hmm. and we would sneak into the fridge with a knife and just. <laughs> <laughs> and like lick it off the knife and oh, so and then good. mom would go to make something with cream cheese and it would all be gone because we'd eaten it. When all. I lived back in Jersey, I worked at a deli for a while mm. and um, we, I would make, I'd get a bagel and I'd put like this much cream cheese oh. on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And bacon. Do you ever have that? No. Oh, I'll try it. You will <laughs> thank me. But you got to have a good bagel too. We do cream cheese and olive. Oh, I've had uh, olives in the cream cheese. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they would, yeah. My favorite is lox and cream cheese. I don't like lox. Oh, my God. You don't like that, Cole? Oh, no. What? No, no, no. Really? <laughs> You've never had a Bialy at uh, Gettysburg Baking Company? No, man. When I go there, I get that mushroom soup. Yeah. Oh, soup. Like yeah. clockwork. And, uh, and then I usually do the ham and Swiss croissant. Or the Cubano. I get a, rob Those a are Robin. Good. A Robin. How about a Reuben? A Reuben. Yeah. Those are all good, but... For breakfast, the Bialy is fantastic. Yeah. It's lox and cream cheese, so basically. You, but anyway. What are your hours during the day? Um, like, are you a breakfast place? No. So I'm actually open from 11 to 6 on Wednesdays and Thursdays. And then Fridays and Saturdays, we're open uh, from 10 to 8. And then Sundays, 10 to 6. Uh, I, I mainly scheduled it that way because I knew that it's mainly like cupcakes and cheesecakes and mm -hmm. like the only breakfasty items that I have are the cinnamon rolls and the coffee cake. Mm -hmm. And I wanted people to have a dessert like after dinner too. And that's why I stay open so late. Cause I know most bakeries don't. Mm -hmm. And I was like, people are still walking around Gettysburg at yeah. eight o'clock at night and they need to have some place to go. Oh, this is gee, one look at this arguments. one. Yes. Thank you. I'm so glad to hear you say this. Yeah. Keep mm -hmm. talking. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I was like, I really like, I want to bring dessert to Gettysburg and like have people after dinner. If you know, mm -hmm. they don't get dessert out at whatever restaurant that they're going to, I want them to come and have like a fun, enjoyable, like family experience because I love like a family atmosphere and mm -hmm. everything and bringing your like your kids in or coming in with like your, your parents or your grandparents or whatever, even That's like the college idea. kids who come in. It's you're great. thinking, you're yeah. thinking. And I like that. You're observing the world around you and you're thinking. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you know who else does this is uh, Tommy's Pizza. Every pizza place is closed on Mondays except Tommy's. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. smart. Mm -hmm. Because everybody wants to, I always wanted pizza on Mondays, <laughs> but all the pizza places were closed. I'd go to Tommy's. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. they're open. They're the mm -hmm. only ones open. It was brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> and so you're doing the same thing. You're being yeah. brilliant here by uh, providing desserts. You don't do like any kind of sandwiches or anything like that. No. No. no so I don't. you're just pure uh, baked goods. Yeah. Uh, how about uh, Italian uh, stuff, Italian pastries? Um, I mean, I've had like tiramisu before. Um, I've even had like tiramisu cake jars. I do a tiramisu like form of cheesecake. But I mean, some people have come in and they've asked for like cannolis and I do it to like custom order. Mm. There's a lot of stuff that I'll like I just do to custom order because I can't necessarily keep everything in the shop yeah, every single day. Sense. Sure. Because it's it, only me they right don't, now. They don't move that fast. Yeah. We, we have a question from in here. Okay. Hang on one second. What about Napoleon's? No, I've made them before, but I don't do them in the shop. I'm telling you, this area has never had a Napoleon. If you can make a good Napoleon okay, and, and come on the show and say, we're now carrying Napoleons and we'll taste them and I'll go into shock because I cut out sugar. But uh, we'll say, uh, I don't and know people, where he's going. With no, this. I'm just saying, <laughs> carry Napoleon. Napoleon. It's what is a Napoleon? 
Um, so the way I made it before was it was like layers of basically like puff pastry and then it was, I don't even cream. Know. Yeah. Some sort of cream piped in the middle mm-hmm. and then more Chantilly cream on top. Mm-hmm. And then I think even in school, I think we put some like caramel like in it or on top oh, of it that's or interesting. something. Yeah. Cause. But then what's just, that? The top layer though is like a, ve- it's like a hard sugary. Yeah. I think it's like, oh, so good. it's. It's some word I feel like starts with an F, and I fondant. No, it's I not don't fondant. Think so. Fondant is different. No, it's yeah, not. Yeah, fondant is like really sugary, like a paste, kind of like play doh almost. Wait, is it? What did you call it? It's fondant. It's oh fondant. It's, yeah, fondant. Oh, I always thought it was fondant. What am I thinking? I've heard of? both ways. Oh, you have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that's it's more French. of a sugar paste. Yeah, of course it's French. I'm just saying you can <laughs> you can Americanize it. Right. <laughs> But anyway, so, but it's like a hard yeah. icing, right? Kind of a thing. Yeah. Oh, man, it's, they're so good. If I ever go back to New Jersey, I'll try to grab one and bring it home, bring it back here and let you try it. it. Yeah. No, not share it. Let you try it. Okay. So also coming from the event world, um, do you do special orders for like to go? Yeah. Yeah, like I I do special orders for everything. We have people calling in all the time for just birthday cakes, wedding cakes, um, even just people ordering just random stuff. And so it's pretty much like people will call up and be like, yeah, we can do that. But um, I do usually ask for like a two weeks notice just because it is me. My schedule's pretty full, especially with like how many people are calling in. So, I mean, I appreciate the business. It's just... I can only handle so much as one oh, person. Totally <laughs> understood. Preaching and, the choir. And so. if there's an event person who's calling you less than two weeks, then they obviously something mm-hmm. crazy happened. So hopefully they would be calling you sooner than that. Uh, what's yeah. the question from the back? Cindy wanted to know if the menu is like fixed or is it changing constantly? No, it's changing constantly. So um, usually it is like the cookies, cupcakes, cheesecakes, but all the flavors change constantly. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll always have like cookie wise, like chocolate chip and sugar. Um, I've also, I I just started a new one too. That's a dark chocolate sea salt cookie. And it's been so popular that I think I'm just going to have to keep it in my, like, normal rotation. Hey, we're here till, like, <laughs> eight. Okay. I think you could run up there. Oh, yeah. It's just right down the street. <laughs> yeah. I think you could probably run up there and come back before got, we're done. You got any snickerdoodle cookies in there? I don't. Not today. Not, you do any, not today. You can do anything uh, for the holidays. Like, do you do special cookies for the holidays? Yeah. Yeah. Usually. Or even, like, I'll change out, like, the cheesecake flavors, like, St. Patty's Day's. Obviously, this Sunday, so I'll do like a thin mint cheesecake. Mm. Oh my god! Yeah. yeah and then, okay. Yeah. I'm so done. All of it. I all know. of it changes. It's roughly the same area of stuff, but all the flavors change constantly. Dragoon so. says sugar is like heroin. Listening about tasty baked treats is giving me the shakes. <laughs> I agree. It's this is tough. I, I'm literally <laughs> sitting here, like my mouth is. <laughs> I'm drooling a little bit, like. Uh, for it's someone on keto, this is like food. Per- and uh, Bethany, you are my soul sister when it comes to food, says Marie. <laughs> uh, Ghost does not like lox, capers, and cream cheese. That is a shame, Ghost. That is a shame because it's delicious. New band name idea, black coffee and cinnamon rolls. Chris Brixia says, oh, no, she needs to open earlier on Saturday for the tours. I need a cinnamon bun before walking the battlefield. We do tours the mm-hmm. uh, third Saturday almost of every month. So mm-hmm. I think we do May is uh, Memorial Day Saturday. But we do tours of the battlefield at 10 o'clock. Okay. What time did you say you open on 10? Set? No, you have to open earlier. I know because I was like, I don't, I don't, I like, it, obviously it's my first year, especially going into the tourist season. So I might adjust for like summer hours. These are just my hours right now. So I may open it. Probably like nine, maybe. So that would be good if yeah. they can they can grab something quick and then run out to the battle. We always tell them, you know, get there between nine and nine thirty. I will say this: just working at the visitor center and mm-hmm. and stuff like that. When people are on vacation, the idea of what is acceptable breakfast food, mm-hmm. oh yeah, goes, goes out, out the, the window. window. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so things like a donuts, huge cinnamon roll, donuts, bananas. Beignets, what are they called? Beignets. 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 Yeah. Think, John Beignets. You know, think, 
<laughs> John Bonet Ramsey. She doesn't remember that. That's no. before her time. And so, <laughs> just like it, the amount of sugar that we sell at the visitor center. Just send them all my way. <laughs> I know it's just astounding. It's just a sound. Yeah, and and in the morning, and I'm like, just watching people eat it is giving me. We like have people like line up sometimes and it'll be like 10 o'clock and so many people walk in the door. I'm like, oh, okay. No. All right. We're, we're starting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, people want it. They yeah. want their, uh, they want their sugar. Yeah. Um, what are, what is it? I don't know how to pronounce this. Poxies, pox, poxkies, P-A-C-Z. What is it? Puchkies. Puchkies? Yes. Well, that's a stupid and way to spell it. spelled like that at yeah. all. No. Of course not. It's Polish. Have you ever heard of that? Puchkis? Uh, I don't think so. Beer hall Puchkis? I don't think no. so. No. Um, how about Kalashis? <laughs> K. I'm sorry, that's spelled uh, pronounced a different way. Probably like mountain or something. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever had the dessert mountain? It's, it's K-O-L-A-C-H-E-S. I don't think so. See... I like. I feel like I've heard all of these words at least one time, yeah. and if I see it, I'll recognize it. But sometimes it's just like these words are so <laughs> off that I'm like, okay, maybe I've heard of it. And and sometimes <laughs> they're called different things depending on where regionally. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Matt Arleth, who who said it, said uh, terrible pronunciation. So clearly, I'm not getting it right. Uh, Polish donuts. The Polish donuts. Okay. Puszkis are a long, not a u. A long oh oh a long a not a u. Page keys. P page keys that Pachkeys. I don't know. I Pachkeys. don't care. Why you're you speak English. Go ahead. <laughs> you know what else is really popular around here? Whoopie pies. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, those are good. Yeah. Oh. Or shoe fly pie. I'm not a shoe fly oh, pie. Oh god. What are the like what are the donuts they make with potato? Potato pies, Fosnots? potato donuts, Fosnots. 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 Dude, Fosnots. those yeah. things are stupid. You ought to see what the Swedish do with the fetch next. That's what Cam said. Do you ever make you ever like make the Fosh nuts? nuts? Yeah, did you ever do that? Um, I used to make donuts usually every week, and then um, it was like, oh, um, I would have to like I'd go to bed at 10 p.m., wake up at 12 a.m. just to make donuts for Saturday mornings, and I was like, my body is getting wrecked already. So yeah. I think it was, it would just be more of like a specialty item that I do, and I would just post on Facebook like, hey, this week I'm gonna have I'm gonna have donuts, and I. I mean, I make it with like a ton of eggs, milk, mm, butter, mm, mm. yeah, a bunch of sugar. What the <laughs> hell are we doing with this keto thing? Person, so that you can just be in the back. That's baking. that's that's the thing. I have four employees other than myself, and they all handle the front. Sometimes they help me. Even like my mother in law, she'll come in on Fridays. She'll help me bake. But yeah, it's it's just me baking right now, and even even with them helping me out front because I was like I can't do both my parents at first they were like oh you'll be fine you can do it by yourself I was like there's no way so <laughs> it, actually my mom she works for me now um and she she does she takes care of all my ordering she answers the phone all the time and uh she does all the front she loves talking to people she'll be out front talking to people for a while but um yeah I have people out front and uh helping everyone and I'll be in the back all day just Working, baking all day. So, yeah. <laughs> it's tough. It's not easy, but it'll be worth it in yeah, the end. Yeah. Uh, punch keys. That's somebody spelled it phonetically. Punch keys. They're, uh, what is it? Oh, I just lost it. No, it's like a donut or something. Mm. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> yes, it is. It's a donut. It's a donut. Yeah. So, all right. Now, um, what's the address? It's 52 York Street. 52 York Street. It's a couple doors down from For the Historian Bookstore. They're a sponsor of ours. And so when you're in there getting your discount um, at For the Historian, pop on down and get yourself a punch key or a, <laughs> a latch key <laughs> or any kind of key. No, get get something. Get, I'm telling you, get a Cinnabon mm -hmm. and try it uh, with the family. You could all eat it. You know, just get one. A little dab will do you with that, right? I don't know. I don't what, is the, what is the cream made of? Is it cream cheese based? No, it's not. It's, heavy, it? it's heavy cream based. It oh. is. Yes. And what? Is it a secret? Oh. Oh, I don't want to give. I don't want. <laughs> <laughs> I am des. Am I in desperate need right now? Yeah. This is. This is. This was a bad idea. <laughs> why? Why did? 
Why did I do keto before this? Well, you know what? We all get to have a cheat day mm -hmm. uh, with our with our diets. So I'm not on a diet, so I can do whatever the hell. Well, right, you can go anytime you want. Yeah. All right. Um, thank you very much for coming on, Sarah. Yeah, thank this you for having great. me. This is fun. Did you have fun? I yeah. hope so. It's really because you're hanging out with a bunch of forty year olds. Like that's. Uh... <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> I'm gonna Whoa. say, speak for yourself there. Oh, Molly. you're close enough to forty. Whoa! You're closer to forty than you are to her age, guys. I hate to tell you. I hate to tell you. <laughs> Maybe you're right about that. Yeah, I know. I am right about that, okay? <laughs> so, but anyway, I'm glad you had fun. You're welcome back anytime. Uh, if you have a new anything that you want to uh, share with us, hey, mm -hmm. guys, I'm, I'm doing punch keys, you know, mm -hmm. then come on in, bring a couple. We'll taste them, even if, if they're gross, because, you know, I don't know, Polish uh, donuts. I've never heard of such a thing. Anything Polish is good. Uh, is I don't, it? Oh, I've yeah. never had Polish cuisine. I don't know. Mm. Poland didn't strike me as a place of great cuisine. You know, Who you knows? Don't, you don't hear stories about it's, Poland and go, I can't wait to eat their food. It's <laughs> different. It's different. Like, I don't know how to explain it to you. But in Western PA, we have a lot of Polish things. Yeah, yeah that's what they're saying in the comments. A lot yeah. of uh, Polish people out but, in uh, Oh, my Pittsburgh. God, guys. Oh, pierogies. Oh. Well, Veronica, Veronica's Polish. She never cooked me any good Polish food. Veronica, did she cook? I've no, never. She, she doesn't right. cook either. Cook. No, yeah, I was yeah. going to say she doesn't cook. You bitches up for food? There she is. You sexist bitch. All right, <laughs> leave me alone. Anyway, we'll be back. Sarah, thank you very much. One thank more time, you. what's the address? 52 York Street. 52 York Street. It's called Sweeter Than Sap, and uh, there is nothing sweeter than this sap, though. <laughs> oh, good Lord. Okay, there okay. you go. <laughs> back. Aren't Taking you your glad calls. you use dial? We are, too. We'll be right back. Forget the sounds of the 60s. The 1860s. I can't and you can't either. Now, there's Marching Through Georgia, the exciting new album by Billy Webster. All of your favorite hits of the 1860s in one place. Such hits as Gary Owens. <laughs> the Battle Hymn of the Republic. Quiet along the Potomac tonight. Marching through Georgia. And much, much more. So what are you waiting for? Go to billysongs.com and order your digital download of Billy Webster's Marching Through Georgia today. That's billysongs.com. Seminary Ridge Museum and Education Center, Gettysburg's premier museum, is housed in the historic Lutheran Seminary building constructed in 1832, a witness to the first day of battle. The museum's three floors of exhibits connect visitors to the dilemmas that led to the Civil War, provide a powerful and personal view of the battle's first day, and explore one of the battlefield's largest hospitals. No visit to Seminary Ridge Museum and Education Center is complete without a guided tour of the building's famous cupola where on the eve of battle, officers and civilians saw thousands of Confederate soldiers' campfires burning to the west, and Brigadier General John Buford watched for vital federal reinforcements as fighting erupted on the morning of July 1st. Today, you can stand where Buford stood and discover how this view helped chart the course of the Battle of Gettysburg. Your trip to Gettysburg is not complete without a serious visit to Seminary Ridge Museum and Education Center, Gettysburg's premier museum. Purchase tickets online at seminaryridgemuseum.org or call 717-339-1300. To get tickets or a cupola tour, listeners may call Call or walk in and mention address in Gettysburg or by ordering online using the promo code AG1863 for 20% off. Seminary Ridge Museum and Education Center. It began here. There's a devil to pay. 
If you're a lover of history, then go to trhistorical.com. There you'll find apparel, drinkware, decor, and more featuring a wide range of interests from the ancient world to the Cold War. Looking to make an impression with the perfect gift? Well, TR Historical now offers gift cards and a vintage wrapping service for a truly unique presentation. And our listeners will receive 10% off plus free shipping in the U.S. when you use promo code GBERG1863. So go to trhistorical.com, TR Historical, for the love of history. Think outside the bus and let family-owned Gettys Bike Tours take you on a cycling journey across the picturesque and historic Gettysburg Battlefield. There's no better way than by bicycle to gain a feel for the terrain of the battlefield. Slow enough to see it all, yet fast enough to do it all. Follow the route of Union troops entering the fray as you ride to the site of the first shots of this epic three-day battle. Feel the drama as you put yourself in the position of a Confederate soldier just before he steps off to make Pickett's charge. Take a stand with the heroic Colonel Chan Chamberlain on the slopes of Little Round Top, just before you view the fields of honor beneath you from its summit. All of our guides are officially licensed by the National Park Service. So don't get a sore neck trying to see out of your car and saddle up with Getty's Bike Tours for a 360-degree view of America's most important piece of real estate. Getty's Bike Tours. Think outside the bus. Go to Getty'sBike.com or call 717-752-7752 to book a battlefield experience you will never forget. You've heard us promote various ways that you can help us keep the show going, but one way we haven't pushed too much is our subtlery at AddressingGettysburg.com slash shop. That's a shame because we have designs over there by talented artists like Ty DeWitt of 1863 Designs and Mike Stretch of the Heritage Depot. So now we're promoting it. Buying shirts, hoodies, mugs, and other items from our sutlery not only helps us keep the lights on, but it also helps guys like Ty and Mike, and it helps spread the word about the show every time you wear an item or you sip from your mug. So head over to AddressingGettysburg.com slash shop and grab some merch. It's the perfect Christmas gift for the Gettys nerd in your family. That's AddressingGettysburg.com slash shop. Our favorite bookstore in Gettysburg is For the Historian, located at 42 York Street. It's because they have the best selection of Civil War books in Gettysburg, both new and used. And online, they have even more to choose from. And if the Civil War isn't your thing, that's not a problem. This is For the Historian, after all. They cover history from the ancient world to the 21st century with a strong selection of World War II and American Revolution books. It's astounding how many thousands of titles from Osprey, Savas Beattie, UNC Press, and more they have in their store. And that's because, well, they have a warehouse too. And that's where they keep all the books that are available online at ForTheHistorian.com. And folks, if you go to ForTheHistorian.com now and order books until you're blue in the face, be sure you mention that you heard about them on Addressing Gettysburg in the note to seller box and they will refund your shipping costs. And if you prefer to stop by when you're in town, well, you could do that too. Just mention Addressing Gettysburg at checkout and they'll take 20% off the retail price of your item. So go to ForTheHistorian.com, stop by 42 York Street, or you can call them at 717-685-5207. That's ForTheHistorian.com or 717-685-5207. You're listening to Addressing Gettysburg. Oh my gosh. Seems like we haven't seen you in forever. Welcome back to Addressing Gettysburg today. Here's Matt. <laughs> All right, we're back now. And, uh, yeah, I was telling you during the break there that uh, Cindy and I went to a uh, Mexican restaurant in Tawny Town the other day called Cinco de Mayo, which, of course, when translated means Fifth of Mayo. <laughs> and um, it's pretty good. Now, you know Montezuma's is my favorite Mexican restaurant in the world, and that includes Mexico. Um, have you been to Mexico? I have. And okay. frankly, I was disappointed in the food. It did not taste like Mexican food. 
ironically. Because, um, you know, in America, the, it gets here and we go, oh, great. And then we dump a bunch of salt in it and we throw a bunch of other stuff. And then we call it Chinese food, Mexican food, whatever. And then you go to the real country and you're like, this is nothing like what yeah. we have yeah. at home. <laughs> we lie. Uh, I mean, we lie about everything in this. I don't understand mm. that. Anyway, that's not the point. The point is, it's very good. It's a good second to Montezuma's. To Zoom's. Good to right, know. Cindy, do you agree with that? You agree with that? Okay. She sounded so little. She sounded tiny, I yeah. She's like, I agree with that. Honey, I shrunk Cindy. <laughs> Where are you, Cindy? Oh, she why is, is she so She's small? talking super soft. Oh, though. she is. Okay. <laughs> she's like, I'm here. I feel like she's a singer trying to keep her vocal cords. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I'm right here. Here I am. You so, know, it's actually worse to do that. To if, whisper? To whisper if your voice is all is jacked true? up. Yeah. Why is that? Because you're straining. No, I'm not. I feel like I'm straining less. No, I feel... This yeah, is where I'm not straining is what I'm doing down here. This is where I'm not straining. This is like relaxed. Uh, okay, easy. new topic. <laughs> Bethany looks like she just wants to go to sleep. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm here, like starving. Voice. I'm starving. We're all starving. Would you like a piece of nicotine gum? That's going to give you some actual burn nicotine. your stomach. It's just going to burn your stomach. All right, listen, I want to tell you a couple things. Nicotine gum. I've never had somebody offer me that before. Well, don't. You want a piece of nicotine gum? Is it gum? still called Nicorette? Yeah. Yeah. And then there's the other one. I don't know. No one knows the other yeah, one. Yeah, I remember what that is. I don't remember. But, they, uh, you know, that's what they have. That's what they have. What can I say? Third Battalion, Third Marine Infantry Regiment, 3-3. It's, like three, three. it's like that Quick Tips company, you know? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Quick Tips. <laughs> Matt had his muck boots on. All right, so listen, I want to tell you folks, uh, Monday, 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 Ask a Guide, Top 10 World War II Graves with Ralph Siegel will be out Aww. on the free feed. And patrons, uh, Dr. James Beagley is going to tell us uh, how to use technology to study the Civil War over Ooh. on Patreon. So that's what we're going to talk about uh, or not talk about. That's what you're going to listen to religiously on Monday or throughout the week, whatever your schedule allows. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's the excitement coming out there. What was the other thing I wanted to tell you guys? I uh, bumped into Veronica the other day. So yesterday I'm walking uh, into Giant. It's evening. Why are you always meeting up with people at Giant? Because people have to go to the supermarket. It's I a small guess, town. It's it a is. small town. And I'm there all the time because I'm not, I can't, I can't do my shopping for the week. You're I think a I do. I'm kind of grocery shopper. I need, I need like, this today, sometimes so I'm going to go get it. Sometimes an hour at a time. Yeah. yeah, I, get you. yeah. I think most guys are. Uh, yes, I think so too. And uh, so I'm going in there to get some stuff. And um, you know that sound that hybrid cars make when they're going too slow for you to hear? Yeah. It's just like demented chord. You know what I'm talking about? Everybody pick a note. We'll all do it at once and make sure we don't match. Ready? Right. Two, one, go. Uh, <laughs> right? That's It's just ugly. <laughs> and so uh, I hear that behind me. Now, I'm walking really close to the back bumpers of the cars parked in the lot. And uh, I'm still hearing that sound. Ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> And uh, it's approaching me, and I'm like, ah, oh, that's so annoying, you know? And then I <laughs> then I hear, hey, somebody leaning on the horn. And I'm like, who is this joker? I, I, I said, well, first I thought, did Cam get a hybrid? Because the only jackass I know that does that is Cam, right? Yeah. And um, oh, well, now you know, too. <laughs> <laughs> so... It's still leaning on the horn. Now, when someone does that to me, I always make sure to never jump, right? Even if it catches me by surprise, I always play it cool because I know they want to scare you, right, when they do that. So I always keep it calm. And the way to do that is to just, you know, be psychotic and keep your blood, uh, your heart rate at uh, below normal uh, rate. Anyway, so I, uh, I don't turn around right away. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And I'm, th I'm thinking one of two things. One, I'm not in your way. There's plenty of room for you to go around. So if you're beeping at me because I'm in your way, you're an a-hole. Two, and this is the more important one, 
if they're beeping at me because their brakes aren't working and they're about to run me over, payday. <laughs> so I'm like, thy will be done. So the idea that it might be someone you know never no, entered no. into the cocaine. Well, yeah, Cam. Getting okay. a hybrid. Okay, fair enough. And fair if it's enough. Cam, either of those could be uh, a just a, just a uh, Absolutely. Mm. So I turn around finally, and it's Veronica and Kathy sitting in Veronica, and they're both, ah! Like cracking up. So I, I, I walked over and I talked to them and uh, I haven't seen them in so long because everybody's been so busy. Yeah. Uh, so we did, you know, quick little catches up or catch ups, you know, what's new, mm-hmm. this, that and the other thing. Catches but up. we're going to try to get dinner uh, sometime soon so that we could all catch up with uh, Veronica. Yeah. <laughs> and Kathy. So uh, that was that there. And they're doing very well. Good. They're doing very well. Now, Kathy let me just, let me is just, just see the something. cutest. Yeah. You know what? Hold on a second. I'm having a, a little bit of an issue here. I, I love this new board, but I'm telling you, I'm about to punch it. Because it just does <laughs> these won't. things. I won't. But I, it just <laughs> does these things that annoy me. Now, hold on. i got to save this. I'm going to just call it Arr, enter. Okay, great. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And I'm just going to go over here to this one and do that. And I've switched over there, and now I'm going to go back to my snapshot, and I'm going to go to R, which is, um, there it is. Okay, and I'm going to, no, hold on, see, now hold on, wait, I got to wait until we get back to, okay, there you are, now can speak again. All right, now you're back, now let's see. No, God bless America. It's so annoying. What are you looking for? My buttons. They're not, see, the bleep just put it out, but it's not playing the sound. And then let's see if it. Oh yeah, it all the stupid, all the stupid ones that they loaded, <laughs> but mine don't do it. Well, I guess you're gonna have to go with funny. Do you have? Are you prepared to do serious? I have serious, but I can just do it. Oh, I want to hear her do serious. Wait, I want you to do serious. Can you do serious? Boom. Let me let me just yeah, try this. So. Let me just try it. Here. Oh, wait, let are me... we are we like are we legit going into news? Well, right yeah, now? yeah. Okay. Why All did right. you have something you wanted to talk about? No, no, no. I just sometimes you do this, and then I have to do it again later, and I'm only That's doing it once. That's just because we like hearing you do it. Yeah, we like hearing <laughs> you do it. Uh, you know, we just like to have fun with that. Okay, let's see now if this works. Never telling. You. And now, ah! all the news that's fit to print and a good deal that's not. Here's AG Today's lead anchor, Bethany Yingling, with current events and sidewalk conditions. A new super... I'm muted. Go ahead. A no, new no, superintendent no, no. is... So wait, hold on. Let's try it again. And now... What, what all happened? The news that's fit to... I pull... So when... I pull everybody's sliders down a little bit so that when people... Because everybody talks over each other, I don't want them to step on you. So... I pull us down, but I, I hit you by accident, too. Rude. So, ready? I know. It's terrible. Okay, go. Okay. And now, all the news that's fit to print and a good deal that's not. Here's AG Today's lead anchor, Bethany Yingling, with current events and sidewalk conditions. A new superintendent is named for Gettysburg National Military Park and Eisenhower National Historic Site. A devastating fire claims one life in a historic structure in downtown Gettysburg. Crazy winds cause power outages and claim one life in Adams County. Reenactors descend on Gettysburg in March, not July. All this and more in today's news. All right, that was Cam. very well done. Nice right yeah, there. Done. yeah, we Thank couldn't laugh you. at you at all. I know. I was, I was more terrible. laughing at Cam, going, "Oh no!" I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! No! All right, Bethany, what is exciting in the news today? So we have a new park superintendent. Oh, yeah? Yes, we do. All right. Um, as, well, not officially. Oh. Not until March 25th. Oh. Or 24th. Yeah. So. W- which uh, would be next week. Yeah, it's next oh, week. okay. Well, good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're back. So Christina Heister, who goes by Chris, which is super confusing when you have Chris Gwynn and Chris Heister. Because you have to do boy Chris, girl Chris. Is that but, what you do? Yeah, that's how we do it. Sounds like a game. Like an, that's an how we do it at the <laughs> foundation. Um, is now the Thank superintendent you. of Gettysburg National Military Park and Eisenhower National Historic Site. She was the deputy superintendent at mm-hmm. our park um, since 2020. So who's the deputy superintendent now? Well, the acting deputy superintendent is Zach Belaitha. Right, that's right. Mm-hmm. And is he going to be the permanent? Unknown. Unknown. Yes. So we may be without a deputy. 
Well, we were without a deputy for a long, 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 Oh, my long, God. Long, 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 long time. How did we survive? I don't know. We didn't. That's why we, we didn't. needed yeah, to bring we one in. One. Yep. <laughs> so um, some of you may already be familiar with her um, because she was here for several years now. For, As the deputy. To be, to be exact. So she will be the new superintendent. And it will start on the 24th. And it is going to be crazy because... For the second time since I have worked for the foundation, we did not have a president and we did not have a superintendent at the same time, which hmm. was crazy. I think you should be president. No, nobody wants that. <laughs> um, All right. Because no. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, and this time it was much shorter for the park superintendent. So now we need a new foundation president it's just the dynamics are always very interesting the first time this happened we had a Gettysburg foundation president several months before we had a park superintendent yes. and now it's the opposite right so when that was Matt Moen that came in and he was able to kind of get situated before Steve Sims came in so now it's going to be the opposite I don't know it'll be an interesting dynamic I'm kind of anxious to see how this goes I'm hoping it's all good I'm sure it'll be fine yeah. Eventually everything will uh, work itself out. Now, a lot of people have expressed concern about Chris because she is not cuddly. Now, what? here is... That's what they say about Matt, too. Here yeah. is the thing. <laughs> here is the thing. She is not a cuddly human. However, the woman gets her work done. I will say that oh. about her. I would, I would bank my money on her any day. Only because she definitely knows what she's doing. Now, does she make a decision that everybody likes every single time? No, oh, but I don't either. think that, that that is physically possible. No, you can't mm -hmm. please everybody. So. Well, she just needs to work on pleasing us, that's all. Just, she's <laughs> been a just, superintendent before. She has for multiple other parks. So she does, in oh, fact, so know she, what she's doing. Yeah, she's yeah. got experience, okay. But the way she looks at things is so fascinating. I'm trying to think of an example that I'm actually allowed to talk about on there. But, but you don't the, have to. I don't want you to get in trouble. Yeah, but like I just like there are times I've been in meetings with her that I've been like, yeah. So I, in other words, she's, she's pretty. No, no she knows BS what she's doing. Gets the job and done. I don't. I don't need her to be cuddly if she gets the job done. Do you know what I mean? I don't mm -hmm. need her to put smiley face emojis at the so end of the email. So you don't think she'll come on uh, addressing Gettysburg and take calls from the public like uh, Steve Sims did? I don't know. I don't know if she would or maybe not. Maybe you could talk her into that. Uh, maybe I can. Mm -hmm. It's worth but it. When, a lot of pressure But there. like when you're in the, um, like we somehow for, for some reason, her and I meet up at the elevator quite frequently mm -hmm. to go downstairs. And she's funny. She's very funny, but she's, there's a difference. She between, takes her job seriously. Yes. Yeah. She takes her job seriously, and you better have your ducks in a row. Uh -huh. They're like a fist, and they're all going in the same direction. Yeah. Okay. And that's what we need. I like that. Yeah. So she'll she you, you she will be the unifying force. I hope so. All I right. really do. And I I'm. What are I'm, the five? You got the foundation, the park service, Eisenhower. I mean, you got military park, Eisenhower, Airmark, Event Network, ah, the LBGs. Yes. 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 Yeah. That so, is a lot. Mm -hmm. Airmark, I think would, I would assume would be the easier one of all the other ones there that she has to deal with, because it's like you have a contract, they deliver food, they bring food, right? I mean, there's a lot more to it. Is there? Yeah, okay. there's a lot yeah, more to no, it. There's though. always more to yeah. it, I guess. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of behind the scenes. Oh sure. But she was the superintendent of the Upper Delaware Scenic and Recreation River as chief of natural resources for the NPS Northeast Region and as natural resource program manager at Valley Forge. Uh, that's how her and Steve knew each other, pre before them coming here. Um. So let's see here. I just wanted to uh, miss, uh, mention something here. Grant Grant said the AG Patreon is rocking right now. So much good stuff. Why are you people who have not become patrons yet not patrons? He asks. What are you losers? He wants to know. Um, any reason over? Uh, any reason Dragoon asks. Any reason Giant over Kenny's? 
Uh, yes, Giants closer to my house now. Um, and also, um, Kenny's tends to be a little more expensive and has uh, less variety. Yeah, Gi- mm-hmm. Giant's got the options. Giant has a lot of options. However, Kenny's has that hot and cold bar that if you want to go for lunch, best. Well, Giant has that too. Yeah, <laughs> but the Kenny's is the best. I'll have, to, I'll have to try it. I haven't yeah. been in a while. And I have nothing against Kenny's except that, you know, like when I lived in town in a pinch, Kenny's was probably the easier one to go to. Um, but uh, now that I live outside of town, um, it's it's quicker to get to Giant. And it's also just, um, there's just more variety. I mean, uh, just uh, it's closer it, to the liquor store. And that's the most important part. Well, they have their yeah. own liquor they store. They have wine. They, they have wine. Okay, they have wine. You know, but, they're but cl- they uh, are closer to the liquor store. You know, in my old age, I'm appreciating wine more. I wish I could get on the I I wish I could get there, you know. Yeah. But me too. I just Me too. I wish you could get there too. I like the I like the vodka and the bourbon, man. Well, I I still like the old uh, hard liquors, but I appreciate I should say I appreciate wine now and it's more for something to have with dinner. It's not I was let's, let's drink a bottle of wine. Like no, if I'm going to do that, it's going to be whiskey or vodka. All right, uh, Bethany, go ahead. What else you got? All right, so we had a pretty significant fire oh, on Middle yeah. Street. We have this a picture of that, on Colby. Tuesday. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, where, where, hmm. on West pictures. Middle Street. Oh, you have picture? Yeah. Okay. It's uh, courtesy of Chris Presley. There it is. Yeah. That's that's a bad fire. It was mostly uh, residential. Yeah. Uh, the fire started in the third floor apartments, and that is where they found the deceased. Um, no, no say yet on what actually caused the fire. Um, it did start in that third floor apartment, um, but what made it so devastating was apparently the building itself is was constructed very interestingly. There were a lot of voids. They were calling them voids in between the walls. So the fire was able to travel a lot quicker than in a more uh, substantial structure. You know, uh, that's I love old houses, but I the one thing I don't like about the old houses in this town in particular is that maybe this is because the college. Maybe this is in every town. I don't know. But a lot of them, if you're renting a house, Mm -hmm. have been rentals for decades and the landlords were not always diligent in making them safe and careful. They were cash cows for them, especially near the college. And so, I mean, my old place, your place now, you go down in the basement and look up on the ceiling. I try not to. (laughs) uh, Look at all the generations of electrical work that's up there. I mean, we're talking stuff going back to the 20s. There was knob and tube in there when I was Knob and tube, that's right. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, uh, I, I don't... I don't know. I don't know what. I'm sure the borough has all this code and everything that, but that doesn't mean that the landlords follow it, and that doesn't mean the code enforcement officers yeah. necessarily you know, know what they're looking at. I don't know the code enforcement officers, so I don't. I'm not yeah. making a a judgment there. But what I'm saying is, well, they don't have to open the wall, no. and this was like inside well, the wall. Right. that's the problem. So right, as, exactly. As landlords made new spaces from old ones. Yeah, they just empty seal spaces. something yeah. up. And, I yeah, and it becomes say, that empty I've space. lived a lot of places. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm all over the place. I have never seen as many fires as mm-hmm. in this in Adams County. Out by my house, they had the volunteer firefighter siren going off. I, it feels like every day, but it's at least a few times a week. And they're usually for house fires, which mm-hmm. is the craziest thing to me. Because mm-hmm. like... In Florida, you never hear about a fire. There was one fire that happened in Denver that I heard of. Yeah. Um, I wonder why. Do, do you I think, think it's people because... here don't know how to work with fire. I think well, <laughs> it's that class. I think there's some of that. I also think it's it's more Upgrades. hodgepodge uh, development. Yeah. And uh, I think, think new development is more... Uh, is safer, but uh, older buildings are not. Older buildings tend to get grandfathered in right. to new laws, and so they're not paid attention to as closely as they should be. As a new building going up is subject to all the current laws, and, mm-hmm. and older also, buildings aren't always. And I wonder too, like being a historic district, um, does that does is it is it uh, does it make it like cost prohibitive for certain things and and homeowners decide you know what I'm not even going to bother 
because, you know, I have to have a certain type of window and I have to have a certain type of this. And, and maybe I don't know if that includes electrical and all these other things. I don't know how it all works, but I wonder if that has something to do with it too. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't remember Colby when I lived back in Jersey, which was heavily populated. I don't remember as many fires, but I do believe that, you know, those, those areas, they have a more, uh, they have a more, what do you call it? Um, hands on, not hands on, but they have stricter fire codes and inspections and things like that because everybody's so on top of each other. Mm -hmm. Also, my other question is, does it seem like we have a lot of fires here because we pay more attention? I didn't pay attention to things back home. Yeah. I paid attention to things here. I'm out and about all the time in this little town. Also, cars crashing into buildings. It probably Crazy. happens everywhere. But There's we seem to have a lot. But we have them, all, we have them a lot because we That's, pay attention. So it seems like. Which is crazy when the speed limit throughout the entire town is 25 miles per hour. Yeah, I know. I know I but people it. don't travel 25 miles per hour. But they I can't think, drive 25. I think one of the key things you keep saying, though, is little town, small yeah. town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's more noticeable. Uh, yes. Well, because there's not, like you said, there's yeah. not as many people. Well, is it more noticeable or is it like. It's crazy how many we're having because this is a small town. Like you would think the numbers would be way it less. It could be a little bit of both. I don't. That's a mm -hmm. good point. Uh, real quick though, uh, just to go back to uh, the deputy superintendent question. Mm -hmm. Brian Wolf says federal HR is slow and they have to wait until she is promoted until the deputy position is officially vacant to recruit. Yeah, that makes so, sense. Yeah. We. I don't pay attention uh, to that. I'm just told things at work ghost, um ghost also pointed out older mm. structures are built differently newer homes have fire stops in the walls to prevent the fire yep. from going up there the you walls. go the the thing that we ran into though at rup with the children's museum and this was so funny to me because i never thought about it of course my my uh, construction experience with old houses comes from the uh 40 what five seasons of this old house that we're on <laughs> all right um <laughs> But the the thing was, we had a uh, sewer pipe burst inside the wall, so there was literally raw sewage pumping mm. into oh. the wall. I thought that was nice. It was mm. pretty great. And um, the first thing somebody said to me, who will remain nameless, was, um, but it's horsehair plaster. It's historical. And I was like, it has sewage in it. Oh. Do you want me to keep it? Oh, Ew. that's disgusting. So, and I think some of the historical problems we run into here in Gettysburg comes from the fact that people are like, but it's history. Yeah. I don't want to destroy just, yeah. history. Mm. You know, the, you're right. You know, the I don't know if they still call it this, but back in my first stint here, people referred to HARB, which is the mm -hmm. Historical Architectural Review Board, as the hysterical architectural mm -hmm. review board i don't I know if that's still the slang for it but to that because they've always been very good to me i'm but. not saying they're bad i'm just saying that's what <clears throat> they used to call it i never had to deal with them but you know yeah well uh, back to the fire um it says approximately 50 firefighters responded to the heavy fire early tuesday morning around 2 45 a.m uh -huh. um the smoke apparently was insane um i Talk to some people who lived across the street who were dealing with smoke damage from it. So it's not really? just that, yeah, not just Go the back people to that here. picture called. Um, just talking about the Air scene Air was Air marked Air. under control at around 4 30 a.m. Mm. So several hours, but the um, fire department did not depart until after 1 p.m. because I saw them when I went to lunch. Yeah, yeah I, I happen. They had the um, middle street blocked off and they sent out an emergency report on uh, the Gettysburg emails. They gave uh, if you're local, you can get signed up for emails if there's like road construction or something like that. They sent out a uh, uh, message on there saying that the they suspected the road would be closed for several days. And it was. Um, it's open today, though, mm -hmm. I noticed, um, because the building itself was so unstable. Uh, during the fire, the back wall of the building collapsed. So that's they left it leaving the roof partially unsupported. Oh. So that was part of the problem. They were afraid it was going to come out into the street. <clears throat> Is this a civil war house? I don't believe so. I don't either, but somebody asked me the other day. I'll have to ask Britt. Britt Eisenberg lived there for a while. So oh, no kidding. You know, my friend Dustin was interested in that house. Mm -hmm. uh, 
he's been trying to move down here and the i think the landlord like i can't remember what he said but i think it was that the landlord never called them back oh wow and so he's like got lucky there yeah yeah well, uh, well, we don't know the cause. So it, maybe in, in the paper, the one gentleman who lives there, I won't use names, but even though it was in the paper, but um, he heard an explosion. That's what woke him up. And a second explosion occurred about five minutes later as he was getting dressed to get out of the house. He thought he thought a drunk driver might have hit the structure, mm. which is, you know, or, as we pointed out, yeah, not uncommon. it's not uncommon mm-hmm. here. Um, he realized when he went to knock on the neighbor's door, he realized the third floor wall was gone at the rear of the building. The wow. wall had exploded into the backyard and it looked like the pits of hell. Oh my unquote. God. Oh, yeah. Wow. And so is it the explosion that killed the deceased or is it? We don't, they don't know, know yet. yet. They haven't so, announced that yet. Okay. So then, uh, I had heard people say that they had heard that there was an explosion and then, uh, I read that's unconfirmed, mm-hmm. but now it is confirmed. It's in the paper, it's at in least. in the paper. Um, oh, wow. and they lost oh. their, this one couple lost their cat during the fire. Oh, so somebody sorry. pointed out it was a Civil War house. It Gary was. Edelman put out a post. Okay. He used to have a friend who lived there and would play chess in the room that burned. That must be Britt talking about. Britt, maybe. Yeah. Um, a staff member from the Ragged Edge Coffee House was affected by the blaze. Um, so oh, there, right. there were multiple people in town. I think they I think said... It's nine families, right? Yeah, yeah, there were nine... Nine families? Nine people. Nine people. Nine, nine people. people. This yeah. Um, so was it an place. apartment building? Yeah. Okay. Used as so, a but now Ragged Edge, though. Um, so it's a Ragged Edge employee. Are they? Is Ragged Edge collecting donations or anything that they did not say that? However, American Red Cross has been called, um, and pe- they're taking donations through the American. All right. Red well, Cross. I'm going to ask Jake about that and see what's uh, going on there, and we'll let you all know. Because uh, la- last time when that fire happened over across from the Jenny Wade House. You know, that displaced the people I, in the yeah. building next door, and mm-hmm. we put the word out, and a lot of people donated mm-hmm. um, and said, well, I heard about you, I'm in Justin Gettysburg, and that, that meant a lot to me that uh, people did that. Yeah. We have a very good audience, yes. even Grant. Uh, <laughs> let me just say here, Grant oh, says, rag- ragged I've edge always... Are, what? So Ragged Edge are asking for yes. donations. Okay, good. Yeah, so, they're saying if you visit them, you can leave a message or a goodwill donation if you're so inclined. Why are you saying that? I don't see that. On their page. It's on their Facebook Oh, on their Facebook page. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, Grant says, I've always lived in fairly new homes in the suburbs, uh, suburbs and never thought about extra worry of living in an old home in a historic district. Matt is right. There'd be so many generations of wiring. And honestly, yeah. well, I got to tell you, and Debbie, I don't mean to scare you because you live in the place I used to live <laughs> in now, but like I used to, I never slept easy there because I was always afraid of waking up to a fire. And part of the reason is because um, the neighbor behind me, not the current and not Jen, but the one before her, um, one day she called me and she's like, can you take me to um, urgent care? I, I, I'm in like ter- terrible pain and I can't drive. And I said, yeah, sure. What's good? You know, whatever. So I take her to urgent care and she goes inside and I said, well, I'll wait out here in the lot until you tell me what needs to be done. So I'm sitting in the parking lot and she calls me and she's like, they're sending me to the ER. So go home and I'll, I'll, you know, let you know. So I'm like, okay, so I go to giant cause I needed to go grocery shopping. I go to giant while I'm at, while I'm leaving giant, she texts me and she's like, okay, you can come and get me. I'm not staying here. These people are disgusting. <laughs> so, cause it was, she's sitting in the ER with all these sick people, snot oh, everywhere. And gotcha. you know, it was gross. So she's like, I'll, I'll risk the exploding appendix. So uh, I take her home and her kitchen door was the, the door went into the kitchen. Mm-hmm. And so I pull up to the steps right outside and uh, she opens the door to get out. And I hear beep, 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 oh, beep, beep, no. beep, beep. And I'm like, I go, what's that? An alarm? And she looks up and she could see in the window because it's a you know big glass pane in there. And it was like a sheer curtain she had. And it was the room was full of smoke. And she's like, oh, my God, smoke. And then the, she had a, her roommate had a puppy, Georgie. And so she runs in and grabs the puppy. And I go running in to see what the smoke is. And it, it was stupid. I, I didn't, like, put anything over my mouth or anything. And I'm like. <laughs> and it was she had she had started boiling a roast to quote Priscilla Presley in The Naked Gun. And. Then decided she needed to go to the trauma unit or no, the the urgent care, and 
didn't turn the stove off Mm -hmm. and the water evaporated and it was the pan and the meat burning. Mm -hmm. That's what caused it. And her entire apartment was full of smoke. And um, we couldn't open the windows upstairs because she... She's when she gets a little paranoid about like bugs and things, and she thought she had like I don't know what that she but she sealed her windows shut, so we couldn't open the windows upstairs to air it out. <laughs> I was like, what the hell are you doing with this place? So I was like pissed because I was like, listen, you know I understand you weren't feeling well or everything like that, but you got to be careful here because it's not just you and your roommate mm-hmm. and the dog; it's two other families mm-hmm. that you've got. Well, I'm not a family, but you know it's two other tenants. That you can completely ruin here, yeah. you know, with this and be the freak careful. And from that moment on, I was never comfortable. Well, because but, we got the, the all the electrical because it's not all hooked up. Mm-hmm. And I know that. But you never know. And I don't know what's in there's, the walls. There's a reason when I first saw the place I asked you, I was like, well, are there smoke alarms? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The problem so, is I had to take the smoke alarms out because there was no yeah, there's no vent o- over the or no hood over the stove. So every time I cooked. <laughs> I went would off. send him off. And I was like, forget this. I'll just die. Uh, there's, just uh, die. Grant says there's a problem in Australia at the moment with people charging electrical devices and explosions happening because of the lithium. Oh, I know. It's, 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 that's such a joke. Don't get me started on that. Anyway, Bethany, what else? Okay. In the news for Another, Bethany. Uh, it's still not doing the camp. Tragedy. Go ahead. Tra- tragedy. 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 Mm-hmm. Okay. That's the okay, word. That worked. Didn't sound right to me. Um, so, for those of you that are not from the area, uh, earlier last week, there was just, or earlier this week. This, it was this week, week. It was this week. It was the wind, guys. Mm. The wind. Mm. It was crazy. It and was it was nuts. all in the upper atmosphere. Yes. And you'd go outside. It sounded biblical. <sighs> yeah. Yes. You just, it sounded like something drastic was happening yeah. the entire time. And it would be beautiful outside, but it looked like. The world was, or sounded like the world was coming to an end. Wind (laughs) Mageddon. Yes. Yeah, I was a little worried a few of those telephone poles or light poles might come down in my house. And And I didn't see very much damage in my area. I didn't either, oddly. But unfortunately, in Gardner's, which is here in Adams County, a gentleman was killed in his home um, with the high winds on early Monday. This is the part that makes me so sad about it. He, they had lost electricity, so he had gone out into the living room. He lived with his parents, and he had gone out into the living room and had said to his parents, hey, you know, the electricity went out. Don't forget to set another alarm so you can get up in the morning, and then went into his room, and the tree came down and killed <gasps> him in his bed. Oh. So um, he was Jesus. 43 years old. Um, Scott Quickle was his name. Um, a very large tree caused extensive damage to the house on the 800th block of Baltimore Pike. <laughs> what was that? What was that? <laughs> it was a bee of some kind. A bee? Yes. What the hell's a bee doing in I here? I have no idea, but it Jesus scared the crap Christ. out of me. <laughs> Is it bee season already? That was my heart. I can't take Sorry, stuff like it's getting this. warmer, well, so they are waking up. I guess. Well, welcome, B. Uh, I'll open the door so we can get some cool air and the bee can fly out and bite Colby. <laughs> Bees don't bother me, dude. No, me neither. No. Moving on. Let Bethany finish. <laughs> Cindy went the ahead floor, and shut our door. The she floor said was bees bother her. <laughs> beginning to collapse into the basement. So, I mean, it the tree took out the house. Wow. Um, authorities were dispatched just after 3 p.m. that morning. This is interesting, too. Three other trees were reported down due to really high winds in the area. And one tree tore down wires, causing an outage that tripped a person's emergency medical alarm on the 700th block. So emergency medical personnel were already in the area when this happened. That's lucky. Wow. Yeah. But unfortunately, he was hit directly by the tree. Oh, so God. He, what a way. Yeah. That's awful. So Sorry to hear that. Two very crazy tragedies in one week. Mm-hmm. Um, so I picked something that was a little lighter to end on. <laughs> Good, because last week you, you, you really had us depressed. I know. I'm a horrible person. Mm-hmm. You know this. We know. Um, this is just for anybody out there in the ether who considers themselves an artist. I'm looking at you, Matt Callery. What? Um, March 22nd is the deadline for submissions to the Adams County Arts Council 20th Annual Juried Art Exhibition. Oh, I'd never do that. You're out of your mind. 
You're out of your mind. It sh- features work from Adams County and South Central Pennsylvania's best artists, but also draws entries from across the United States to be considered for awards raging, ranging, raging, raging, ranging from two hundred dollars to a thousand. Um, it'll take place. The exhibition will take place at the Schmucker Art Gallery at Gettysburg College from May thirtieth to June twenty second, and pieces will be selected for the show by juror. I can never say that juror. Um, Jessica Ambler, who serves as director of the Martin Art Gallery at um, Muhlenberg College. Mm. Um, so if you feel that you want to enter into this uh, contest and want to have your artwork looked at by a professional and be part of an actual exhibition, now's the time, guys. You can uh, More information is available by contacting the um, Adams County Arts Council. And they have an article on their um, website as well. You know, I like to paint, but then when you see uh, artists, true artists, like like Wendy Allen, you go and look at her stuff down on uh, Baltimore Street and her gallery and all the Lincoln stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you, you know, you realize you, you realize the, the difference between someone who likes to paint and an artist. And there Here's- is a difference. Here's the deal. I don't have Wendy Allen stuff hanging in my dining room. Because she didn't give you a painting for Christmas. I have Matt Callery stuff hanging Right, because I gave room. it to you. <laughs> you I, mean, I don't just hang shit up willy-nilly. I, I juror my house. Oh, you she juror your it house? She hangs with, with, uh, with, with precision and, and very... What? Tactile. She doesn't hang it up willy nilly. She does it oh, precisely. Oh, 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 oh yes, thank yes. you. Precise hanging. Yes. Okay. All right. What else? Uh, there. This is reenactor celebration weekend. I don't know if you know this, but there are going to be reenactor recruitment. Is that different events. from reenactor appreciation weekend? It's both. Okay. Um. There's. Uh. They are going to be having, um, two setups. Well, multiple setups, but two big ones um, for if you want to get into reenacting and learn more about this as a hobby. Um, the the big, big one is going to be at um, the History Center, Heritage Center, the Heritage Center, which used to be the Wax Museum on yes. Steinmore Avenue. Yes. We will have people in the side yard at Rupp House, but more civilian reenactors um, at Rupp House in our side yard. So that's at 451 Baltimore Street. And then there will be stuff up at the um, Maryland Settler, which is up Baltimore Street. Mm -hmm. I do not have their address. Do I have their address? Oh, 252 Baltimore Street. It's not very far from where we are right now. Mm -hmm. And they have a new store location, which I think is the building next door because he closed the the Mercantile Museum. um, It's the Saturday of the Ken Burns Film Festival. uh, Which is in April. Here, Yeah, it's in April here. Though in this in this very building and in the building in front, uh, J.D. Hewitt, Chris Mowry, and uh, I'm very grateful I was invited. I don't understand why I was invited uh, with him with those guys because they're big. But Eric said, "Well, your studio is here, and you know maybe people want to come and see the studio." And I said, "Okay, well I'll have to get the girls to help me clean it." And uh, um, so we're going to do like meet and greet type stuff that day. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, I know it's not the same as going to see Ken Burns and Martin Sheen and uh, Jeff, not Jeff Daniels. What's the other one? Uh, Sam Waterston. But it'll be, you know, second rate. It'll be, it'll be a second place to go. <laughs> Compared to them. But so that's whatever that Saturday is. But go ahead. Um, so if you if you want to get into the hobby, this is the weekend to come to Gettysburg to do check we, out these places. Do we... Um, did you ever reenact? Not really. Yes. I mean, I have the dress, of course. Yes, of course. How about you, Deb? Oh, I did. You did. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, what was did you big do? Into it. Um, I was part of a, the Twenty Fourth Michigan. You've actually met some of my friends who are part of it. Andy Roscoe and. Oh yeah, with their their sponsor. Yeah, Will Eichler. But it was um, mm-hmm. uh, history fix and. Uh, I am a patron of. They're the only people I'm a patron of, oh. and it's um, wow, bro. Civil War Digital Digest, yes. Brah. Brah. Um, but yeah, I did. We did civilian, and I I still have my whole kit. So I was so, hoping to get back into it at some point, but we'll see. 
I, we were having an interesting discussion on one of my uh, my uh, morning drives the other day. And um, can you open the door? It is it is like an oven in here. Please. Are you dying? I'm dying. It's hot. Um, the, all right. Why are you cold? No. I'm fine. No. Anyway, and we were discussing reenacting and and stuff. And uh, I don't know. It's just an interesting hobby. The people that do it are interesting. Mm -hmm. I've observed them from afar, and I prefer to stay that that distance. You get a wide variety of people. Mm -hmm. That is for sure. You do. You do, I, but you don't. Yeah, exactly right. You do, but you don't. I got so. I'll tell you this real real quick. Uh, this story. Uh, this is years ago, like two thousand and seven or something like that. But I was walking down in front of the wax museum, uh, and there was uh, it was I think Memorial Day weekend or something where there were a bunch of reenactors in town, and I'm just kind of strolling. It's a nice June or July night, whatever it was, and um, there's a young couple in front of me. He's a lieutenant. She's a woman and, but they're young. They're like 20. Right. And uh, so I'm just walking and they're, they're up ahead and they're, you know, arm in arm. She's got her little fan and doing that whole thing. Yeah. And then coming the other way is an older couple. Same thing. He is a major. She is a woman and she's doing the fan thing and, and everything. And as they pass each other, you know, the, the, the kid dips his head at him and, you know, keeps on going. And the major stops and turns around and says, son, you're looking at a higher rank. And oh the kid, the kid looks over his shoulder and he's like, you're not even in my unit, dude. And he just keeps on walking. And I was from that moment on, I was like, you know what? I never want to get into that hobby because there are, there, there's other people like that. He's not the only one. Correct. Oh, Correct. Right. Of I either either type. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. And I just, I can't, either type, but the kid was right. The, yeah. the, the dude is like, come they're on, you're not even in the, the, They're the, not the military. They're there's, not the military. Here, here and there, there's different levels of reenacting. The, the gentleman who was being the major is more of the type that likes to do what we call immersion events where they are literally living it. Like they don't, don't talk about anything they wouldn't have talked about back then. Yeah. I don't think they this guy yeah. was that. No, I think but this guy liked they wearing act a uniform. Like everybody should do. Yes. That. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there are others like, which was a bit more my unit that, um, we're there to enjoy the history ourselves and learn about it ourselves, but we're also there to teach it to other people. And, that's what the public thinks is happening or wants to happen. But then there are the others who who think they should act like they're living it. Yeah. I'm like, hello, welcome to the 21st century. No. Yeah. <laughs> Eric Houston says, I think I've heard that story once or twice or 14 times. <laughs> I tell it often because it's it's the most, it just still irritates me today just to think about it. All right, what else, Beth? Let's wrap up the news. All right. Uh, the park is doing their uh, reading adventures book club. So this is for the older kids. Um, they're reading Soldier's Heart written by Gary Paulson. It's a book about the 1st Minnesota Infantry Regiment and the Battle of Gettysburg. They'll be reading two chapters each week so that it has already started. But if you're a fan and would like to be a part of a book club and you are a younger human, you can or you have a younger human in your house. Uh, now's the time to join because um, there's a couple more weeks left. So that is a, uh, a children's book club. Mm -hmm. Okay. And of course, uh, now that you mentioned that, I must uh, remind everybody that we have the Addressing Gettysburg Book Club. Addressing Gettysburg Book Club at gmail.com is how you join that. Steve Byers does a great job. And then there's also the Addressing Gettysburg Film Club, which is AG Film Club 1863 at gmail.com. Casey Turbin does an excellent job with that as well. I have attended a few of those, but I often miss them because I can't keep track of my life. I, True story. Yeah, I keep forgetting. Even though he sends the email out yeah. like the night before the night comes and I'm like, oh, dang, nabbit. The emails, uh, the, you know, I, 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 they just get lost in the shuffle with all the other emails and I can't tell what's legit and what's not. And I, I, just, I just can't with the information. Too much overload. There All right. Go. Last but not least, this weekend we have some walking tours from the Gettysburg Town Guides. This one's a cool one. It's the Women of Gettysburg Episodes of Courage and Compassion. 
Adults are $20. Students, um, which is ages 8 through 19, are $10. And kids under 8 are free. Um, you can go on to the um, Gettysburg Town Guide site to get tickets as well as to see more about it and times and things like that. But they it looks like 1 o'clock both Saturday and Sunday they'll be running this program. So kind of a cool way of looking at town by walking through the town yeah. and talking about the women that were there. And those of you that are fans of That's What She Said, this is a chance to get a little bit more information and walk past the places where some of these women lived. And that would be it. That's what today. she said also coming out next week on uh, Patreon. And uh, I forget which one it is. Oh, no. But I do oh, believe it was no. one that was recorded in the old studio. I don't believe we've got to this one yet in the recordings. Really? I believe. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Totally different topic. Do the voice. Now, you didn't do it What's at all voice? last week, and I was very upset. What voice? The one about the guy who was an insurance salesman. The banker. The vice yeah. president. Uh, um, I forgot my name, <laughs> but I was the uh, vice president at uh, M&T Bank. Uh, if you need a loan, uh, what was his name? my wife Sharon could... Uh, Wendell. Wendell? That's your name. Wendell what? Wendell Watson. I don't know. No. Nah. Wendell. She, she I mean, fits. It this voice is just, it doesn't even look. Wendell so. Clarkson? Was it Clarkson? Wendell Watson, I think. Is no, the way I think it was Clarkson. Yeah. Every one of you could have heard it if you actually listened to the show because. Uh, you didn't do it the whole show. I did it before the show and I recorded it and it's the cold open of the audio only version on Patreon, which is free to oh. everybody who wants to go and listen to a better audio quality than this uh, internet stuff. So I'm just saying, yeah, no, it's no, I see, I, I see that. you want to improve oh. <laughs> by listening to the show uh, incessantly. Like uh, <laughs> I'll pull up and I'm listening to the show. And people are like, oh, you listen to your own show. And it's like, yeah, that's how you get better. Well, I don't get that version of it. I only get this. Well, it's free. It's free. But it's on it's not on here. And no though. commercials. No, you just um, go to Patreon and it's free. Yeah. Uh Peter, by the way, there will be vacation pictures next week. Yes. Uh she uh she There's got some uh, technical difficulties today. Yes. Yes. Uh, and also uh, for anybody that has any kind of source material to use on a Thursday show, I should have told you this. Get it to me before Thursday. <laughs> So, we don't. and then technical issues can be resolved and before the yeah, show. Technically, and then I'll have it and I can put it all together and, you know, My but bad. whatever. All right. So, listen. So, we've got um, uh, so much uh, to come. What's uh, Cindy? What's uh, what's on the, the, the docket next week? Who's our guest next week? Ross Hetrick from the Thaddeus Stevens <gasps> I'm Society. I'm so excited. I'm excited about that <laughs> one, too. Not that. What? Battlefield Brew Works from the Battlefield Brew Works Society. Still, wait, what? Still interested. So wait, Ross is the following <laughs> week? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So it's Battlefield Brew Works. We have somebody coming on from Battlefield Brew okay. Works, uh, which is out on the, uh, what is that road? I always oh. forget the name of that road. Hey. Is it Table Rock? Hey, Jamie tried to call in, but the phone line was down. Oh. oh. Well, I'm sorry, Jamie. I'm sorry. It looks like it's showing that it's up here. It says, unfortunately, the show is offline. No, nope, yeah, now it says it has been closed. Okay, well, thanks for telling me. Sorry, Jamie. Sorry, Jamie. We'll get you text, next time. But I no, no, no. I'm can't. saying to the computer program that oh. was making it look like it was open. <laughs> All right. Sorry, Jamie. We love you. Um. Okay. So, uh, I forgot what I was talking about. It doesn't matter. Let's see. Does the closing theme work? <laughs> <laughs> That'll be no. That's the wrong bank. Yeah. See, it's not working. Is this? This, that was, gave a whole new meaning to the after show. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I'll just uh, switch over to this one here. And uh, maybe now? Nope. So, wait, that's the wrong thing. How about? Yep. That's yep, a different yep. Show. I am done. And now, all We're going to close to this one. You guys have yourselves a great one. See you next time. Thank you, Colby. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you, everybody. We'll talk to you next time. Bye bye.